Welcome to the MMA Roadshow, episode number 156. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is with me. What's up? There are no big uh, events on the horizon this weekend, so we are at home in Las Vegas. Yeah. You are in the continent. You are not uh, overseas, uh, abroad, doing doing that good no, thing. No, sir. I'm at home in Sin City enjoying a, a day off for me, actually. So, you know what a day off means. It means we get together in the <laughs> day afternoon. Drink. That means Your day's day over. Drinking. Day drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it is a balance point home game and uh, getting things started right now with the with the fantastic Aloha Scope and Hazy India Pale Ale from Ballast Point. This is one of my favorite ones for it sure. Is. Like the Aloha, this is the bomb. It's just it's like one of those ones I want to have during the summer, mm -hmm. but I want to have it during the winter, and I just want to have it whenever. I mean, luckily we don't really have winters out here. That's right. For like two uh, days. <laughs> this one is really, really good. So thank you, Ballast Point. This is a... Uh, this stuff's amazing. Our buddy Steve that hooks us up out here, he told me he went to a conference out in uh, out in Florida, actually. Oh, and they said uh, all the great things about the MMA Roadshow. Of course, they were talking about what amazing it is, you know, really trying to pitch <laughs> us to everybody. That was really his primary point of being there, was pitching the MMA Roadshow to <laughs> other breweries. Uh, but no, there was a big like beverage convention, but uh, Stipe was out there uh, with his with his Modelo uh, commercial and all that. They were kind of showing it, and he was talking to them, and I guess he was – talking to all the vendors and the reps and everything. So he was talking about how, how Stipe was up there, you know, in front of like a thousand people, you know, talking about the experience of being in the commercial and being a part of Modelo or whatever. I was like, I bet he was really uncomfortable, wasn't he? Like Stipe does not seem yeah. like a fan of public speaking. We even, even when we get him, like some of the best times is like on the third or fourth attempt, even like that particular fight week. Mm -hmm. We've seen him a ton of times. So it's not like – we're building on momentum. Like you think like most fighters are like, oh, shit, what's up, dog? I remember you. Yep. We did an interview. It's like that first interview of the fight week with Stipe, even though there's familiarity with us, it's still always like it's the first It's the first interview of the week. He's always a little bit more with, withdrawn a little bit. You know, you kind of got to pull it out of him more. You, you know? do. It's, it's funny. I mean, here he is, a guy, the guy's, you know, champ of the world. He's a fireman as well. But I just don't think he enjoys doing that stuff. But Steve actually said, too, from, from Ballast Point, that Stipe, he said that they actually had some great conversation just kind of chilling, you know, not really like once the presentation was over, they mm -hmm. just kind of talked to him a little bit. And he said, man, he's the funniest, you know, and he is. I think sometimes that doesn't come across real well on uh, on TV. So right. hopefully it does. You know, with the Ultimate Fighter, it's all done. It's wrapped. And, and hopefully when it debuts, you know, people get to see that side of him because he, yeah. he is actually a really cool cat. And uh, and funny, and he's you know he's always messing with people and stuff. Yeah. But sometimes it doesn't come across in his interviews. Even even his jokes sometimes they kind of f fall flat a little bit. <laughs> but like if you know him, you kind of chuckle along with him because sometimes he'll start saying something and he'll just kind of say something, and then he chuckles. Right. He'll like <laughs> you know he'll laugh with it, and it's almost like you were almost there, Steve. You were almost there, but I'm gonna fucking laugh with you anyways because you're the champ and you're the man. You know. <laughs> Oh, man. Love them. All right. Ballast Point. Aloha Scoping. Get Thank it. you, Ballast Point. Thank it's you, solid. Uh, yeah, as you said, man, uh, back on the continent. I missed you in London last week, but it was cool to see the European crew, man. Simon Head was there. Uh, Shamak Karsandu and, of course, Abby Subban didn't spend a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, on the podcast. But of course, he spent a lot of time working behind the scenes. So it was good to hang out with those boys. We got, got to, to do your Nando's four oh. or five days in a row. I'm like, guys kept sending pictures, and I was just like, oh, you're killing Tuesday, me. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, four days in a row. Not once. Nobody did a whole chicken. No. Not even Bro, once. Nobody's... Abby, after the fact, sent sent a picture, and he did the whole chicken where I applauded him. It's like somebody finally stepped up. Somebody finally he probably, stepped up He probably game. fed his two kids with that, too. That's probably so. <laughs> nobody does the full chicken other than you. I love I love Nails. They've got – you know, I know they have some in, in the United States. I know – I think we had yeah. one in Baltimore one time. Yeah. Uh, Somewhere on the they East They have Coast. some in Canada. They have some in Australia. But they yeah. just taste better over there, man. It's it does. Just, it's a better version. And, 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 you know, I sent you that one clip in, in – in, over there, it's, I, I truly believe it's like people make fun of you. Like the, the, the English were making fun of us that we were eating at Nando's, but they all <laughs> eat like, at that's Nando's. That's where you're gonna go. They all that's eat at Nando's, go? but that's yeah. what's funny. They they make fun of you, but it's like you yeah. eat there too, bro. What do you? Yeah. So, I, I it's just it's consistent. It, it's it's you know what you're gonna get, but you're right. And we've had <laughs> us being Nando's junkies, we've had Nando's in different countries, yep. and it's. Different, like it's the different. ingredients, the stuff that goes into it's a little bit different, and I think there's still a little bit of that nostalgia flavoring that that's being sprinkled on sure. by going to a Nando's in London as opposed to going to a Nando's in in, in Boston or Baltimore or wherever. Um, so there's always a little bit of that, but it does go into it, and I, and I think it's the same way when you go to any fast food joint in another country. 
things are different. Like a burger in yeah, yeah. Tokyo or even Korea if even tastes if it says different. Even the same, like you just know? the ingredients like that you can get. Everything is different. You know, I love Heinz ketchup. I love Heinz oh, yeah, ketchup. Oh, yeah, ketchup a big one. And, and, and Nando's in the U.K., they have Heinz ketchup. They but call like it ketchup? In Australia, no. Or they call it ketchup? Yeah. Ketchup? <laughs> What's up? Oh, Michael Bisping, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's they have like like I love the flavor of high school. And then when you're in Australia, like all you get is like tomato sauce or whatever. Yeah. It's not it's not the same. It's, it's not same. the same. So you're right. Sometimes the ingredients it's just the ingredients, just a little bit. So. Yeah. Well I mean yeah, and, so and I'm, unfortunately I'm for, for I know, right? But unfortunately or something fortunately, I guess some countries have higher uh regulations when it comes to the quality of stuff. You know, with we take for granted uh, you know, we just expect everything that goes into a store, anything that we eat, is always going to be of the highest quality. But there's a lot of preservatives. There's a lot of chemicals. There's a lot of things that are used in processing the stuff that we hear well, in our diet. We, we don't even think about. Yeah, I mean, as much attention you as know, we pay to our diet. You know, totally a lot of to, attention. Trying to keep the temple clean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but when you go overseas, like a lot of those other places, they don't stand for the same thing. Like they have stricter restrictions and guidelines of how ingredients are supposed to be. So I think that weighs into why things taste. A little different, especially like burgers and stuff. Like the the, the meat that gets grinded and stuff is just different. It right. just tastes totally different than our huge mega plants that process thousands and thousands of of, of animals in kill a day. cows by the second. Just kill cows by the second. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you guys caught all of our coverage from UFC Fight Night 127. We did a lot. Uh, it was a fun week. It wasn't a huge car, but the fights ended up being good. Hopefully, you caught all that. We did have a and a half episode if you want to catch up afterwards, which mm-hmm. was fun. We did it in the host hotel. And uh, honestly, super, super guest. Man, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Bruce Buffer came and sat down. You know, Ed Soros, I think, would have sat down had we asked him to. He was yeah. kind of like hey, saying, What's up? And it really made me think, man, I, I want to, I want, I really want to, I want to talk to the junkie crew, you know, uh, danced up. I, I want to say, because right now, what we do with the road show, it's not really, part, it's not the junkie family, but it, but it is, but it right. isn't. But, man, I think, you know, as long as everybody understands that we're not shirking responsibility, I mean, yeah, we're having a couple of cocktails and we're enjoying, but we're still covering the show. I think if we could do that at every show, man, if we could do the post fight show from the host hotel, and and that's not, it's gonna be tough. Like Brooklyn, it'll be impossible because the host hotel, yeah. everything will be closed. Well, everything. last time I mean, you guys weren't staying at the host hotel, so you we had were, to make we were, it. Yeah, but we were right next door. Yeah, yeah, but we were right next door. But that's yeah. the only thing that but sucks even, sometimes like, is in, the transportation like in, to in get Glen, away there. In Arizona, me and you're gonna be there. I, we've got an Airbnb. We're about. Are five, we at the host? No, we're about five minutes okay. away. We're at Airbnb, so we're about five minutes away. But there's no reason we couldn't go to the host hotel, set up in the lobby, and. You know, it's going to be – Yeah. the foreign shows are better because I think everybody kind of goes to one place because they right. don't want to venture out too far. Right. Uh, the domestic shows are a little different because everybody feels – but I don't know. It made me – it was so fun because the after party was going on there, and I feel like winners, losers, teammates, coaches, they're all walking by you, and uh, I, I want to do that because I think it's fun. You know, to, to hear our take on what we saw I think is great, but if we can also just grab somebody – That's you, the best part. I think that's the best part of I it. I mean, after it, a while, it inspired me. It inspired me that yeah. I, I want that to be our goal. Yeah. You know, I just I just want to make sure that you know Dan Stup is okay with it. Everybody understands, yeah. you know that because obviously, I mean, we do have a lot of work to do after the show. I was show. gonna say yeah, because I can see where, you know, but I think you know even even the talks we had the other day, if there is more emphasis put on getting the stuff out fight night, then it's tough to kind of postpone editing yeah. a lot of those stuff to do something like yeah. this. But yeah, you're right. If this becomes a bigger part of or initially part of the overall fight night coverage. That's what I want. It should get treated just I want as, it to be part of the fight night coverage. The other stuff, you I know? want to be part of the fight night coverage. Like, remember in uh, what country where it was where Francis was like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. And he hopped onto the show, yep. you know. Um, those moments lend themselves to happen if you are right there where the fighters are after the That's fact. That's what I want to do. So I'm going yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. We're going to get that done. Uh, shout out to Simon Head, by the way. Did a lot of good work for us. You know, he's still – Put, putting a lot of part-time gigs together to make ends meet. Yeah. But he did a great job. And one thing that was his idea, and it came together perfect. If you didn't catch this video, Google Michael Bisping boiled down to a single word. It's a tough task. We did this video, and it was his concept. It was his idea. Uh, I helped collect some of the answers. But basically, we 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 asked fighters on Fight Week to describe Michael Bisping. You know, like, here we are. We're in England. You know, Michael Bisping is a guest fighter. We know his his final fight's coming up soon. Describe him in a single word. Boil him down to a single word. Of course, everybody kind of gave us a word and and then and then you know rambled a little bit. But that was cool. You know, they were explaining yeah. why that was the word they used. Um, but then Simon Head. Not only did he come up with the concept, which turned out to be brilliant, because I'm sometimes I'm not good at thinking of things like that where it's like I'm so like in the bubble that I don't sure. think like creativity. You know, that sort of thing. Um, and it turned out great. And then. 
Simon Head actually was able to catch up with Michael Bisping and actually get him to describe himself in a yeah. single word. And the video, Abby did a, an amazing edit on so I won't ruin it because it's a, sh it's a really short video. It is short. I will say, Cajun Johnson calls him a dickhead, so that's the word that he uses. <laughs> so that, that'll that set the tone for you a little bit. I mean, not yeah. not everything in here was glowing praise. Legend. But, yeah. You know, you there, know was some, there was legend. some good. Oh, thanks, Yair. appreciate that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was, I'm surprised we didn't get him on oh, it. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, but no, there was some, there's some good stuff, uh, and the video came together, and I, and I won't ruin it. Uh, but but it, it, Michael Bisping has, I think, the perfect answer describing himself, man. So yeah. Uh, it, but that was all Simon Head. So I uh, just want to thank that. Of course, Abby Suwan on, on the great edit. So uh, that was last week. This week, no fights. I will say this. I uh, I'm, I'm my yesterday was my kids' uh, picture day at school, which was pretty cool. So I'm kind of you know I'm getting since I'm home this week, I get to do some personal life stuff. It was my kids' picture day at school. Awesome, by the way. Uh, just my my kid's school is kind of up on like a high area of, of Vegas. Oh, it's and high so, end. Yeah, well, I didn't say high end, sir. <laughs> I'm talking about altitude. It's a private school. No, I'm talking to... about altitude, sir. <laughs> we are we are public school. We are. Although my my wife did find out that um, she asked me because you know Eli's been wrestling now for you know about six months. He's mm -hmm. having fun. He's getting good at it. You know, he's not great, but he, he's picking it up. Right. She's already thinking scholarships. Dude, and shit. she was like, she was like, yeah. <laughs> hey, she was like, do you think? Like Bishop Gorman would do like scholarships for wrestling. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they would. You know, because yeah. like Ricky Lundell is the, is oh, the yeah. coach there. I'm like, pretty sure they do scholarships. She's like, he's never missing another practice. That's <laughs> awesome. She's like, I he is. She's wow. like, he is never missing a practice. He's gonna <laughs> wrestle because you know wrestling is pretty cool in the fact that you know my kid's small, right? Yeah. But in wrestling, you fight somebody your size. Your I mean, size. You're, you're not yeah. you're not trying to go play football. You know right. what I mean? Where, where you're gonna be the smallest dude on the field? So. And worst case, you know, or not worst case, best case, after his time at Bishop Gorman, you know, the Ohio State University has a wonderful Fantastic wrestling program. program. Almost won the national championship. Penn State took it home. I was uh, going to say, they, I he'd mean, be happy to go to Penn State. That, has, that's that's legit Has program. Ohio State ever put out any good wrestlers, though? I mean, I mean, I mean there's there might be one <laughs> or two. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, uh, that's – no shame in that, man. Like yeah. that's that's a that's a good goal. That is a good goal. So here's what she came home from though after picture day. There was a letter that says career day <laughs> at kids school. And of course my wife wants me but my wife is involved in everything and, and she's awesome, man. She does a great but she wants me to be involved in everything as well, which I of probably you should which, be. I mean, I should be as yeah. much as possible. I like, saw you that there is a picture you did recently. You were on Facebook and you were reading the oh, book in the class. She made me go read to the class. She's like, you never even said anything about that. I saw it on Facebook. Yeah, you never she even said like, hey, by like, the way, you should go read to the class. And uh, what'd you read? Um, what pet should I get? Which is of okay. my kid likes it. So, um, but I was so like, you had why to bring should... the book as well? I was like, oh yeah. She it was wasn't like, like you went and you just had like options. No, no, you have to bring the book. So I, I, I brought one. Oh. That like, but she wanted me to do it. I'm like, why should I do this? She's like, well, I mean. You have like a good voice, and you're like comfortable and stuff. Kids were and I'm probably like, like, "Oh my god!" They're, they're never forgetting that voice. Oh. They went home. They're like, "Dad, why don't you sound like that?" We oh, heard a guy. I'm just hungover, sweating. You know, it's first thing in the morning. I'm still trying to get my focus right. You yeah, know, yeah. The shorts were on point. Oh, khaki shorts were on point. I wonder. If, I wonder if some people dress up for that. If some fathers, oh, I'm like, sure there are people suit. in suits. <laughs> well, so that's the whole thing. So now here's this career day, right? So then they'll definitely be in suits. So career day, like, yeah, like and I, I put a post on Facebook, like, kind of joking. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to say? Like, hey, every Friday morning at 9 a.m. local, I watch 24 dudes in their underwear, which is kind of part of my job, yeah. you know. I'm sure there's maybe a better way to phrase it, but if you want to be real, I and mean, we should we should be real to these young that's, adults. That's you know, the truth. You got you got to treat them like adults. Tell so, them what's up. So I don't know. So I, I'm thinking about going and doing it, but I do feel weird too because. I mean, going to my career day, like I mean, I mean, I am a journalist, right? But I, yeah. I always do feel a little guilty to say like I'm a journalist, because man, when I think of journalists, like I think of, like people that are out there like in the field of battle, like covering right. stuff in Syria or well, whatever. That's so, you know what I mean? That's like that's such a small percentage of what journalists are doing. They say like those guys are legit gangsters. Those dudes are straight up, are straight up like so, but that's unreal. Why, the shit. That's why I feel that's guilty. That's not what we do. That's what I'm saying. That's why I feel guilty like even having my but name they call associated that, They call them cooler them. stuff. They call them like wartime correspondents. They have like Battlefield much, correspondent. They have much cooler titles than just journalists. Well, so then, okay, so then I could say sports journalist, which is accurate. Yeah. Um, it, are you on ESPN? Well, well and they, 
you know, that it could be that, but I don't know how far you get into MMA. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I cover mixed martial arts, and it was cool. Our, our buddy Danny Rubenstein actually said, "Hey, uh, Kies is out there until like March 31st. He can come with. This isn't until April. That would be, but cool. that'd be cool. Bring a fighter. I did think that, that like, would be, that could would be bring huge. a fighter and make it like a make it kind of like an anti-bullying thing too. You know what I mean? Like career day slash That's anti-bullying. Cool. Um, I thought that especially was cool. as like a, a cool story, like guys that have done uh, had like troubled pass and then like had fixed themselves, like Cub yeah. Swanson. Yeah, a lot of those cats that have really taken it upon themselves to kind of keep kids doing good things, you know. But I, I think every fighter has a good story. I think Kiesa too. I think everyone probably has, and I like the idea with the whole angle with the anti-bullying. I guarantee everybody at some point in their life has dealt with a bully, whether sure. a friend of yours was a bully, whether you were bullied, whether, you know, kids that age, they won't realize that they are the bully until right. they're older and realize some of us might have been the bully and oh, then eventually got our shit together, you know. So, I mean, I think that's a – it's probably – you could probably grab any particular fighter. And yeah. Cass, the great thing – I mean, I love how they suggest the casting. I love the fact that Michael actually chimed back in. Michael is so animated. He's so good. I oh, guarantee he'd have been amazing. I kids, wish he'd be in town. The kids would absolutely love I know. him. But I mean, there's a lot of other cool guys. I mean, you got um, Khalil Roundtree's here. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Jess is a really well, good it, one. Danny Rubenstein also manages yeah. Jesse Jess. He mentioned her as a possibility. I mean, I'm sure if I talked to the UFC, like they would get Forrest Griffin or yeah. somebody like that. But he already does so many things. She, like, I feel they could bring bad. Jesse, and she could tell the 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 crappy job that uh, Metro's doing right now of solving. Uh, oh. her, can you believe all that shit? That's crazy. Well, she did get a response. You saw the response, right? That they said they, through one of their Instagrams, they done said yet. something like, "But they said something like, oh." Perhaps that wasn't the best way to re that we should have responded or whatever, you know. And it's just like you're still doing it through social media. Why are you not picking up a phone and calling them right. and like actually doing some FaceTime? I tried to retweet it and I actually hit my buddy. And up we're talking, at, of course, uh, about just in case anybody doesn't know. I think most okay, people yeah. probably do, but her house Listeners was robbed. This, well, yeah, yeah, her house was robbed uh, during the fight in St. Louis. Actually, right, the yeah. fight in St. Louis while I was out there, house was robbed. Her pet was killed as well. Yeah, yeah, was injured and they uh, had to had to put it down. Cause yeah, of its injuries. so the, and they they basically have a lead on a on a very yeah. strong suspect that um, lives I, out of state. Is that I what guess, it was? Yeah, he, I want to say in Arizona. So there the, the, there would be costs involved of extraditing them from I want to say Arizona. But this is a person that has priors, has other convictions and things going on that you figure they'd be like, okay, this is a serial offender, you know, and let alone the fact that. This was somebody from out of state that uh, there was so much more thinking and involved. This wasn't just a random by chance uh, event. So this is a criminal that it has a pattern that really did some thought behind it. So you figure these are the kind of people you want taken care of. You want them taken off the street. So as soon as I found out and I saw it on the tweet, I tried to retweet it and tried to hit at Lip Metro. But then afterwards, I heard your voice in my head because I did the <laughs> at LVMP first. Then I'm thinking like, oh, not everybody's going to see it because it's only going to go to my oh, followers right. yep. and Metro. I was like, oh, I should have put a period first or something. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm still learning the Twitterverse. I don't have 50,000 followers not. or whatever like you, but I did reach out to my buddy who is the acting news director at Fox 5 and was like, hey, by the way, that fighter you guys did a story on, shit's still going on. Look at what's they're going on right there. So I don't know if they tried to reach out or whatever, but I tried to at least be like, all right, here, let me. here's my part to try to help a little bit. I've got a friend of a friend. Of, well, it's my wife's friend's husband that's actually in Metro. I need to, I need to hit him up. Maybe he can Maybe he can get some things I mean, going. and it sucks. I, I just don't know. I mean, I get it. There's, there's a lot of shit. And you think Vegas is definitely not some sleepy one light town. There's a lot of shit that goes on in Vegas. So there's right. only such a big force that's here that can handle things. But when it sounds like things were kind of being teed up, it's like, all right, get a get a win, get a publicity win by take care of I this. Agree. Here's here's something that's been on the news. Here's a fighter that has a national scope. You know, she's not the biggest star, but she's a growing star. Yep. But she still has a national platform. That's a win that you want for your she's organization. A, she's a girl that has like an X factor. You know that that yeah. it factor where you're like kind of drawn to her or whatever. Oh yeah, you know, she's, she's got super dark cute. Quality. She's she she's I love her accent. Yeah, I mean like people her are, people awesome. are she's got a great attitude. Yeah, so people are drawn. This it just seemed to me like this would have been a win. And I think if more people probably looked at each individual case maybe on a case per case basis if it comes to whether we want to uh put 
resources behind it. We hate to think that that's even an issue. But if there was, if it did get down to that, you want everybody to get the same equal hey, treatment. But if it, Metro could use some good PR right now. They could use PR. And that's exactly it. I was just watching this stuff. Uh, some of the one of the local dudes was tweeting about how the whole Freedom of Information Act. They're trying to get information about the October one shooting, and Metro's like, "No, we don't want to give a bunch. We haven't really even Cause it's not touched it." Yet, yeah. You know, they, they're like, "We don't want to give stuff out because it might show our investigative procedures." And I totally get that. But right now, this people are after this, and, and this is going to get spread out more nationwide. So by the time this podcast comes, there might be more grief that people nationwide are throwing towards Metro. Because of how they're dealing with this. So they need, you're right, they, they need, need a right win. Now. They need some good PR stuff. And something like this would would help. But uh, All right, yeah. so listen, should I go to my kid's school? Because here's the thing. There's going to yeah, be doctors. Yeah, I kind of went on a tangent. There's going to be doctors. There's going to be lawyers. There's going to be like. I see, you're I mean, a journalist. You're a sports journalist. I think I'm supposed that's to get up there and tell cool. people if, if you want to write about cage fighting. That's what and I'm tell, worried about. And wear your blue shirt and tell them, like, you get to go casual. You meet guys and you get to dress casual. <laughs> <laughs> you get to wear super, super blue shirts. I just feel weird. Like, I, I don't know if it would offend some kids or some parents, you know, that, that, that what I do. I mean, I don't want to. No, I mean, you're I mean, not. I, you're I guess not, I just talk about just sports journalism, but I, I don't. I'm not just a sports journalist. I'm well, a I mean, martial arts journalist. I think even I think you just talk about your growth. I think your story. You started in the food industry, and then life happened to give an opportunity where you were able to follow your dreams, follow something that was a passion of yours, and then you were able to build a career around. I think that's a good message for mm. kids. So like. Whether you think life sets you in one particular way and you think that's what it is, never be afraid to follow your dreams. Life might give you that opening. You followed it, and now you get to travel around the world doing what you love, covering a sport as a journalist. I you. think it's a great story. I think it's a great you. – if you spin it the right way, there's it's going to be tough for some lawyer guy. I mean, well, granted, if a guy's like putting away criminals, do whatever it is and it is. But, I mean, like just hearing like, oh, I – I work a job that makes lots of cool money, and I get to get a lot of fame. That's that's good and all. I hope but dudes I mean, that cheat on their wives, not lose half of everything they own. Right? You get to, you. <laughs> like, oh, I mean, job, you can sir. make your story oh, oh. inspirational if yeah. you if you find the right light about it. I mean, like you you were set to do uh, cooking, and you you could have had a, a complete well paid career yeah. just in the food industry. But you know, j if you guys don't know, John used to work in the food industry, mm -hmm. general manage different restaurants and whatever. But they had that opportunity before uh, Junkie became what Junkie is now, and you took a leap of faith. And that takes a lot of courage to do that sort of things. And I think kids, especially at the age where they're looking and they may be, well, my parents say I need to do this, but I really want to do this. Those are the dreamers. Those are the people we need to keep coming forward because it's the dreamers that come up with the ideas that eventually change the world. So, you, you know, any chance that you can get in there and maybe say, hey, stick to your guns, kids. Well, Fuck! Don't really <laughs> stick to your guns, kids. Don't use that phrase in school. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, stick to, stick to your 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 ideas and your dreams and work for them, and you can get what you want. And you know, and it's I like it. so oh, it's inspiration just, when you think about like that. I mean, like inspired I'd, me. I'd put you up against whatever. I mean, like what you do is very, very. It's very cool in that sense. You know, so you know, don't think that you're any less doing what you do than some psychiatrist or some whatever. You know, I mean. We're not saving right. lives like a police officer or a firefighter, but darn it, we're, we're trying to do some good out there. You know? I like it, man. You so. just inspired me. I've made me feel all good and tingly and go. stuff. You, <laughs> you know what else will make you feel good? Health IQ. The MMA Roadshow is sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health-conscious people like runners, cyclists, weightlifters, and vegetarians get lower rates on their life insurance. Go to healthiq.com slash road, hence <laughs> the MMA Roadshow, right, healthiq.com right. slash road to support the show and get your free quote. It's all about better science, guys. Health IQ spent years gathering the science and data to prove the health conscious deserve lower rates, and, and they really do. I mean, they're, they're doing the work, folks. Over 1 million people took the Health IQ quiz and formed the basis for the scientific analysis of the relationship between health and health knowledge. They took all the years of data and science on the health conscious to the top carriers and partnered with them to get the lowest rates on life insurance for the health conscious. Health IQ can hook you up with lower rates by taking a few lifestyle quizzes, submitting actual data like race results, run keeper data, etc. We have we have tons of that run. Uh, yeah, stuff. like you could like if you have a podcast every week, 
that shows that you like to drink during the day on Thursdays. <laughs> Probably not going to get the lowest rate. <laughs> Probably not going to get the lowest rate. But if you have other types of data that you can provide, you can reach out and they take you on a journey learning about your lifestyle and your choices. It could be a dangerous journey if your name happens to be John Morgan. But if it's not, <laughs> it could be a good journey. It's like good drivers getting better rates. If you're health conscious, you deserve it. So they'll help with the underwriting so everyone understands your lifestyle based on specific stats and information. To see if you qualify, get your free health quote today at healthiq.com slash road or mention the promo code road when you talk to a Health IQ agent. That's what's up. Listen, the bottom line is you need life insurance, especially if you're like me. I, I, I got a wife and a kid. You got to have life insurance. Do you it. definitely have to. <laughs> you I definitely. mean, like, you definitely have Wait, to. I, 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 mean, didn't like your, I didn't like your tone. <laughs> I didn't like your tone. There. I didn't mean to like shoot my lasers at you. I'm like <laughs> when I said you, you John Morgan. But but you listen, know. if you got a wife, you got kids. What, you you, you got to do the right thing. Do the right thing. You got to have life insurance because if, if something family. happens to you, that's it's your for family. your family. I mean, like you, you got to take care. Of, you got to right. take care of your family. Rafael dos Anjos, Colby Covington. Sounds like this fight is booked. Uh, as we sit down to tape this, we haven't been able to confirm it. Uh, For I'm yet off today, another but... interim title. Oh, okay, so <laughs> all right, let's let's talk about it. Uh, it sounds like it's happening. We haven't been able to confirm it. We've been trying, but we had to sit down and, and start taping. Um, interim title number one, garbage, poo poo. Um, it screams to me. This reminds me of where we were, what two weeks ago, sitting in this exact area right here with Brett Okamoto here in the Casa de Cold Coffee, talking about bookings based on needs rather than like what actually makes sense and this to right. me this screams all about that uh, a need and it's it's i mean it's a good fight it's a damn good oh, fight it's a great fight love the fight uh and 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 you know what that card that card in rio it needs some help right like it's not it, right. it needs a little bit of help it needs a little help but i don't know that putting the interim tight like is is the fight any less meaningful or impactful if it doesn't have an interim title fight on the line, like I, I just to me, if you want to add that fight, hell yeah, add that fight. Right. But why does it have to be an interim title fight? Either one of those guys, I guarantee, if they just know that it is the number one contender fight, that's right. They will put that fight and on. And that's what it is. They would do it. I mean, like you don't need to have this. Yeah. I mean, it's a glorified number one contender fight with an interim title tagged on to the end. I mean, it was July. I'm looking on July 29th. The last time Tyron defended his belt. Right. So when is Rio? Rio's May. May, May. 12th. It's actually so my son's birthday, be, so that's why I'm not going. It won't even be a full year since it's been done. That's and, right. And, and, and as far as I know, Tyron was still looking for hopefully like a May return. So unless there's concrete info coming from Tyron's side, like I will not be ready to fight by May or June Shit, give them to the end of July. It was July 29th. Well, that's a give a year before you start looking at interims. This is ridiculous. I had heard it was a little later than May, but still June or July the latest right. was what Tyron was looking at. Right. To me, that's 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 less than a year. Right. And, and not only that, it's not like he's like, that's when I'll get cleared and then I'll book something for September. I mean, I'd heard he was ready to be booked in June or July. Right. That's less than a year. And not only that, not only is it less than a year, it's one or two months after you're going to have an interim title fight. Like, I, I just. Right. It bothers me, man. I mean, it makes the card better. No question about it. I mean, you look at that oh, card, completely. and it's it, it, it needs a little something extra, right? I mean, it just sucks. I mean, like, because you're right. It's like, oh, it's a pay-per-view. We need to have title fights. That's we need to have title fights. It's like, no, you don't really. But if that's what you think you need to have on there to sell a pay-per-view, it's ridiculous. Like, the, the diehards realize what that fight is. And I think, right. you know... It just seems to me like that it's adding for the um, the randoms right. that maybe you know how why were we going to pay for put, a fight put an extra that's belt in Rio on there, yeah. you know like let's just put an extra belt I mean like you're not gonna I don't I just don't see anybody moving any extra for the fact that there's a title as opposed to just for the fact of this particular fight you don't need to put the interim you don't need to cheapen the belt and do this crazy pattern of throwing interims just to do it and I don't know if they're willing to take that risk and they feel that it is a risk to, to, to say that people won't because then they'll be like oh did we do everything that we could to possibly hope that this card sells and I think they're still in their mind they're like well it's a pay-per-view we've done so many pay-per-views now that have like two title fights right you know we have to have two title fights or we have to have at least one you know and and if they don't feel that they have it they feel like they're giving a lesser product or maybe they think that putting it in Rio that most people in the states are already going to check out of it you know, I mean, it, it just it sucks because it, it 
it, it still just goes, we go round and around of doing these things that makes it seem like the sport's uh, an illegitimate sport. Like, it's just more entertainment. And we realize, and, and, and Zufa has said it. I mean, they're, 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 we're an entertainment company. <laughs> right. That happens to put on fights. That's right. You know, this is, you know, it's, and it it's, sucks. It's because a media company. It's, it's, it's a media it's, company. It's supposed to supply it's all these hours company. of right. entertainment, you know? You know, it's unfortunate. Uh I'm glad that these two are fighting, but you know I'm a diehard. I, I like that fight. Uh, whether there's an interim title or whether there isn't, I appreciate that fight. And, and all it does, it boils down to the same thing. They're still just the number one contender to get a shot at well, the guy that actually has the belt. So, so why put thing. an interim title on it? USC 224, if you look at it right now, if you trust the bout order that USC.com has on their website, the, the main event, of course, Amanda Nunes, Raquel Pennington, Vitor Belfort, Leota Machida, Jacare Souza, Kelvin Gastelum, uh, Carl Roberson versus um, Cesar Mutange, and Tal Slayas versus Jack Hermanson. That would be your pay-per-view. I agree. You know what? It needs a little something extra. It does. And I think you said it right. Have we done everything we can, if you're the UFC, to sell this pay-per-view? Sell Probably us. not. RDA versus Colby Covington is an incredible addition. But putting it for a, an interim title doesn't mean shit to me, man. Yeah. It just put the fight on there. So, I don't know. I was just bummed to find out that's that's the plan. It, again, not totally confirmed. Uh, it was funny. We were trying to get a hold of Tyron Woodley. Tyron is actually in L.A. He was doing a, like a Periscope tour. I watched it. Dude, that What place. a nice house. Holy cow. And he what thanked, a he thanked nice whoever house. at the end that, that gave him that gave him the uh, – I'm sorry, we're the, pausing. The hookup or whatever. Yeah, who gave him the hookup on the location because, oh, my gosh, as he was going, it had to be at least, I think I remember seeing like six or seven bedrooms. It was massive. You know, the the huge pool uh, with the jacuzzi, a heated pool, all that other good stuff. Badass, so, which I guess is for his kid's spring break or whatever is basically what he's there for. Spring break or – but he said that there was a sauna in it, so like his kid was – Cutting weight tournament. for wrestling, so I thought I thought maybe it was like a vacation slash, slash wrestling wrestling thing. But dude, I thought I saw like two saunas or two somethings in there. It was ridiculous. It was nice. All right, so but, listen. So I like the fight. I, I like the fight. I'm happy with the fight. I just don't think it needs to be in their title. Here's the other thing that I want to ask about: Who does that leave for Darren Till? Because right now, and 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 we'll touch. We'll I thought it was Kamara. <laughs> well, see, well, is is that is? Do you think that's the fight that they're going to make? Well, because just the fact that these two are actually chirping, like Darren either needed to have ignored it, and maybe not really did it. I don't see Darren as really like sidestepping anybody. I think he's the kind of guy he just enjoys himself out yep. there, and he's enjoying the fact that he's getting this promotional boost. That that that. that that's just gravy. The gravy on him being able to go in there and fight. He just strikes me as a dude that just loves fighting. He likes getting there fighting, whether or not there's a title or not. I think he wants to be the champion at some point, but I think ultimately he just really enjoys himself. So right now he's he's taken in stride, and the fact that they're trying to, to put anything and, and really behind it, I think he's just happy getting in there. So when Kamaru starts – chirping away he's like okay yeah bro yeah. like like we can scrap you know like you want to start bringing me in and you want to start talking trash we can who cares about the belt like let's settle this shit you think you that's know? the fight to make right now i mean i think uzman needs to get in there i mean like he with, with colby and rda out i mean it's a good fight it just seems like a bad matchup for i mean i don't want to say for, a bad, for till like, it is a bad matchup but that's what's exciting about I mean, it wonder that's boy the would thing. be the fight that he wants people said the same thing like Look at what he was able to do about Don. A lot of people thought, like, well, all right, well, if this kid's got strike and if he could take it, but he was the bigger guy. Right. I mean, like, and he, it's, I think it's going to be the oh, same he's thing. Huge. He's going to come in as a bigger guy. Like, just see him again thick. in London. Oh, my God. He's I mean, so but big. Darren is a big kid, man. Like, this kid has some serious size to him. And I think it's a, it's a great testament because a lot of people think, you know, the thing with, uh, uh, Donald, Donald and him, that was a stand-up match. Right. Now you're putting him against a guy that would be able to show whether people say, all right, does this kid have the skills to keep it off the ground? Yep. Does he have the have what it takes to, you know, when somebody that's, quote-unquote, a bad matchup for him comes in there? And I think this is a fight where I guarantee there's going to be a finish in that fight because both of these guys are want to go in with chips on their shoulder to want to finish this fight. I think it's an incredible I love the fight. fight. I love the fight. And the fact that they're asking for it, if fighters are talking about it and they're chirping about it, that means they are so behind it and they're so into it. So you have two guys like that that are into it, that are starting to chirp and starting to get in each other's brains. Yep. 
make it happen because there ain't nothing else. Because if you give them somebody else and you're like, well, we think this is good for the division. This is blah, whatever. You know, let's go this route instead. I know you're chirping over here and you guys got some heat, but let's go this way. You, you don't take away from the heat. If they're asking for it, give it to them because that's going to be the fight that they both want. And they're going to put the most into the training camps. They're going to put the most into the fight. And I guarantee somebody's going to sleep or somebody's going to tap out. In that fight. How, how would uh, Captain Jean-Luc Picard get that fight book? <laughs> He'd say, Dana, wait, uh, make it so. That started to sound like Simon there. <laughs> make it so, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make it so, number one. It's a number one contender. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Too loose, man. I like it. And you know what? That would... And not that I don't already have a lot of respect for Till, because I agree. I mean, I think he knows that he's fighting everybody at some point. You know, right. he, he really wants to be the greatest in the world. But we all know that a striking match would be the style he would prefer, right? right. Like, the, like the Wonder Boy fight is the best fight for him because the stylistic matchup is perfect. The name recognition, like Wonder Boy has more name recognition than Usman, even right. though Usman's to, – to me, again, I think Usman is probably – one of, if not the worst possible stylistic matchup for Darren Till in the division. Yeah, you he, know he's bad. He's he's like running against uh, a Khabib. Khabib just yeah. has a style that just it grinds against you. You might go in there with every game plan in the world, but all that goes out the window once he gets a hold of you. And yep. That's the same thing with Usman. If he gets a hold of you and he starts getting it to the point where he can control uh, the where the flow of the fight is, whether it's going to go to the ground or whether he just ties up your hands. You can't really strike if you get tied up. And the thing with Till, he's just strong. And, you know, I, I just love the fact that he's willing to engage it. And he's like, you know, and, and he's even sort of respectful, you know. Or I guess uh, Kamara was the same in him. He's like, yo, I didn't say you didn't have skills, but, hey, I'll show that you don't have the right. skills. You know, just like. It was a pretty interesting little oh, uh, little Twitter exchange. It between. was super, super fun. Like. Like, I haven't felt like this, at least reading that, was kind of like uh, when I felt when, like, uh, Kevin Lee and then, like, Kevin has a way, too, of getting under guys' skin. Yeah, like, yeah. I felt like, it was like, all right, these guys are really starting to have, like, good words. Like, you know a good fight's going to come from it. So I'm just like, let them keep going and then make it happen. Unless, unless, oh, unless Till, who has all the momentum in the world right now, decides for somebody else. But if the heat keeps going, I mean, like, why not? Because if like he's not it. asking for anybody else, and Usman deserves it. He deserves to get uh, some more marquee fights, whether it be the headline or a co-main. He needs to have some stuff because he's he's doing he's doing work. Yep. He's doing work, and he's proved himself that he deserves to be in at least a co-main spot for sure. I agree. I think uh, – I mean, I guess the argument would be that you could put Till against anybody – and it sells out, but you still Depending need TV on if ratings, it's in Europe. too. Yeah, because it's, it's in Liverpool. In Europe. Yeah, it's in Liverpool, yeah, so you can I mean, put him against anybody. All right, well, speaking of matchups being made and matchups being rumored and all that, one that kind of came out of nowhere but got announced was uh, Volkan Uzdemir versus Shogun Hua uh, in Hua. Chile. It's not going to be the main event. Uh, there is a main event coming, and uh, we can talk about that in just a little bit. But uh, it is a big fight, and, of course, it's the first we've heard of Volkan since his failed shot for the uh, the UFC title. And uh, – had a chance to talk to him. We were we were we were we were within minutes of actually breaking the news, and then USC ruined it for us, and they got it out. Uh, but Bastards. yeah, as a consolation prize, uh, Vulcan was uh, actually willing to uh, to do a quick interview with me. Funny, um, it was actually uh, he called me at 6:30 a.m. this morning. So Ooh. you ask, you know, John, what are you doing over here so early to do the podcast? You said it was going to be later in the afternoon. You well, did. I've been up since 6:30 <laughs> in the morning already working. So you're like, uh, I'm already ready to day drink, Kenny. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, it's it's not even day drinking for me. It's like after afternoon drinking. See, it's a whole <laughs> different thing. That's true. Uh, all right, so listen, I had a chance to sit down and talk to Vulcan Uzdemir this morning at 6.30 a.m., and uh, here's what he had to say. Vulcan, how you doing, sir? Hey, John, I'm good, and you? I'm doing real well, man. I appreciate you taking the time to talk. <coughs> oh, you're welcome. So let's get right into it, man. Uh, obviously, we haven't heard a lot from you since January. I mean, I know that was probably a, a rough night for you, man, but... Uh, Give me an idea of kind of what you felt that night. I mean, you had this amazing run to the title, and then the Cinderella story kind of kind of came up short, man. What were your emotions like after that? It wasn't too bad, you know. Um, it's all about uh, uh, it's all about the goal, you know. It's all about where I'm headed at, and uh, I know, uh, you know, I'm like uh, I'm like a big boat, you know. I'm like it's a really big back boat goes to one direction. It's not easy for me to you know to to change the direction. 
So I'm still heading toward the same goal. It's been uh, only not even one year until my title shot. And uh, I guarantee you it's not going to be another year until I'm champion. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. I mean, were there lessons that you take out of it? I mean, you know, Daniel coming in, he was like, hey, listen, you don't understand. I mean, there's levels. And I know that it's a little bit of trash talk, but it's true, right? I mean, you were only in the UFC for like a year. So I just wonder what the lessons were you took out of it. I mean, was it was it anything fighting-wise and technical-wise, or was it more just things of, you know, mentality and, and, and understanding where you are and, and, and all those things? I think it's a little bit of everything. Um it's a you know it's a big uh, it's a big picture. Uh, it's a mix of um, it's a mix of technique. It's a mix of mix of um, understanding the flow. You know the the momentum, the timing during fight. Uh, how to deal with the you know uh, uh, the gestion of the fight, and uh, of course it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's different. So, uh, when you fight uh, the champion and somebody who's been in the ring for so long and uh, fought against uh, the best of the best, so it's definitely something you you learn uh, you learn from, and uh, this makes you just a better fighter, you know. Yeah, no question about it. So, what have you been up to since then? Did you take some time off, a little vacation, or did you get right back in the gym? What's uh, what's it been like for you? Yeah, the only problem was I just called the staff infection oh wow and uh so i was out of the gym for maybe a month or three three four weeks uh back and forth and then i had um i, I because of this i took some time to take care of my eyes i did the lasik surgery oh nice so now i'm you know brand new fresh and i'm back at the gym i've been training uh, a lot of jiu-jitsu now wrestling you know all all of the stuff to complete my game so I will be unstoppable. Very cool. So you're not waiting long to get back uh, into a fight either. H- how did this come about? Were you were you bugging the UFC for a fight or did they come to you and, and, and want you in this matchup? I wanted to fight um, Glover first or Gustafsson, but he couldn't agree to anything. And then they proposed Shogun. He was in Chile. It was a brand new market. I love. Uh, I, I would love to visit the place. I uh, would love to visit uh, Peru also, Argentina, and uh, all those countries is, are like something. I, I was like, yeah, it may, make perfect sense for me. Fighting a former champion, and uh, Shogun is the guy in all my division. Shogun is the guy I, I would love to fight the most. He's the fight that, that that make me the most exciting. And uh, he's somebody I, I watched growing up and I was looking up to uh, when uh, when I start fighting. So so I have to catch the chance, you know. If I can fight him right now before I retire, I, you know, I have to do it. Because maybe in two years he, he won't be there anymore. I was going to say, it's funny. I feel like Shogun gets called out a lot. And I, and I always wonder what the fighter's mindset is. I mean, I, I'm a fan too, you know. I mean, I... I remember all his glory days and pride. I mean, as you said, he's actually a legend of the sport. But, uh, you know, he is on the tail end of his career. There's no question about it. So when he gets called out, I, I always wonder, is that respect because it, it would be amazing to fight Shogun? Or is it a little bit of strategy to say, well, you know, maybe, I don't want to say an easy fight because there's no easy fights in, in the UFC. But, you know, maybe he's not prime era Shogun Hua. Shogun is definitely uh, somebody I want to fight because of, uh everything he accomplished and the the fact that I've been watching him for so long. So it, it's such an honor for me. Uh, it's, he might be somebody also everybody knows back home even more than like some star right now, you know, from that, that are on their prime right now. So because mm. he's, a, he's, a, he's a name for sure and, um, and definitely brings uh, more attention to, 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 to this fight. Because it's a mix of everything, and uh, the fact that uh, that I, I'm able now to be at the level of the the, the people and able to fight the people I was watching, it makes everything more magic, you know. Yeah, no question about it. So you said you were trying to fight Glover and and Gustafson. What, what happened? They just, I mean, they they weren't interested in fighting you, maybe because you were coming off a loss, or was it just timing? I mean, what what happened there that those didn't happen? I think. I think it's a mix of timing and uh, also opportunity. First, I was um, 
I had the, the staff infection, so I wasn't able to fight. And then now I cannot get punch in my face for like, you know, still maybe one more month. <laughs> so I had to get ready. And, uh, you know, the, the LASIK surgery is, uh, is a hard procedure, procedure on you. So, um, so a little bit of everything. And, um, but now, now we came to an agreement and, uh, it's struggling and, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a dream fight for me. Very cool. The, uh, the LASIK surgery, I mean, did you, I mean, have you, uh, t talk to me about how that improved your eyesight. I mean, was this something like, have you had bad eyesight your whole life? Did it affect your fighting at all? Was this more for your personal life? I mean, why, why did you elect to do that? Yeah, I always fought with my contact lens in and, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you get eye pokes or, you know, just rubbing the face and I lose my contact while I'm fighting and then it's stuck in my eyes or stuff like that. So it was always a problem and um, I just wanted to, you know, to, to take care of it. And uh, since I was out for a while because of the staff, I, I, I was like, okay, maybe I should just take time uh, to, to, to deal with that. Because it's, it's never an easy time with fighting. With fighting, you never know whenever you're going to jump in or uh, back in or, you know, time to get ready or time to start the, the training camp. So it's always delicate to take time off. Yeah, no question about it. I, want, I I've been considering LASIK surgery. I know you're a you're a tough guy, man. You 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 lock yourself in a cage with another human being to make a living. But uh, was it a little scary, at least, man? Like, I mean, a, a laser on your eye—it it kind of scares me a little bit. Um, so I wasn't really um, scared about that, and then uh, once I did it, I, I regret it so much because, man, I'd rather get punched in the face though, because <laughs> actually it hurts. <laughs> and then, um, and then, uh, yeah, I was on medication. Like I think for f three days, I was like more sleeping than anything else. So um, because it was hurting, and then, uh, and then it was fine. You know, I did the PRK because fighter cannot do the LASIK, the normal procedure. Oh. So the PRK takes a little bit more time um, to heal, but the vision is getting better at the end, and uh, I think it's even. Uh, an imp a better version than the normal LASIK. Well, very cool. All right, well, talk to me about the uh, the training for this. What's what's the plan? I mean, you staying down in Florida? Is it the same coaches, same routine? Are you, are you changing anything up because of the loss? What's uh, what's your plan? Yeah, I've been uh, training a lot with Cyborg lately and, um, you know, focusing a lot of my jiu-jitsu and uh, my, my wrestling uh, also. And uh, it came, uh, you know, it came all together. My my jujitsu is improving, my wrestling, and vice versa. And um, and uh, definitely, uh, I see uh, I'm working on a different part of my game. And uh, I know my striking here, my knockout knock part will leave me. So by working on those different aspects, it's just gonna make me better. Yeah, no question about it. And you kind of touched on it. You said it was a fast run to the title shot. But, uh, I mean, that light heavyweight division, I mean, you're still right there in the mix, right? There's only a couple couple names right there at the top. So do you feel like, you know, I, I'm not saying necessarily a win here, but, I mean, I guess it's conceivable maybe even by the end of the year with everything that's going on. I mean, you you could be back there. Are, are you welcoming that? I mean, are you wanting to get, you know, maybe as soon as the end of this year back into another title shot? Yeah, we need to we need to see what's happening with the with the with the matchup and everything. But Cormier fighting Stipe for me is a, is an amazing fight. It's a, I love super fight. I really love super fight. Uh, it's the you know it's the it's the time where you can give to the fans also what they want to see. You know, exciting matchup, champion against champion. That's that's amazing. I lo I would love to watch that fight, and I would love to fight uh, that kind of fight too. Mm. So um, I know I know it's pretty cool, and then uh, we need to we need to see also what's gonna happen. But definitely, uh, maybe one year will be you know my 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 second title shot. So um, everything can happen fast. We saw that last year with me. Uh, <laughs> everything can happen really fast. We, you just need to make the right decision and take the right opportunity. And that's why also I took the the title fight on you know s you know s such short times and I, I just go went for it because uh, you know I, I don't care my nickname is no time so I gotta do it too <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah so I, I guess no regrets right I mean it was such a fast ride I mean in one year you went from you know nobody's heard of you to uh, now no, you're in a title no regrets at all I learned a lot 
I learned a lot. I became a better person. I became a better fighter. Uh, definitely, it's a it's a it's a change in my in my life, and uh, I, I welcome I welcome that change, man. Uh, you know, I welcomed it. No doubt. You uh, we were texting yesterday, and you said Chile is a, a beautiful country. Have you have you visited, or you just been doing some research and getting ready for it? No, first of all, I wanted to go to Peru, uh, Machu Picchu, and you know, do hiking, you know, trailing uh, and di different stuff. And uh, you know, Chile, Argentina, I, I want to go there for for a long time. Um, so I love South America also. Um, I love to I love to travel. You know, I love to to see stuff. So. Um, so yeah, and one of my goals is to see the all seven wonder of the world. So a lot of stuff are on my list right now, and uh, and uh, that's that's perfect for me to be there because I, I know I can stay around and uh, and uh, visit all the country around for sure. Very cool. So you'll stay later, take a little vacation after the fight. Yes, yes, and uh, maybe I can visit the family of my of my fiance over there. She's from Peru, so that will be nice. Oh, very cool. So you got some ties to the region as well. That's awesome. No, yeah, of course. You speak you speak any Spanish? Got to learn Spanish a little bit more. Uh, though, but, uh, yeah, I understand. I understand. They talk together with their mom and family and uh, I know what they talk about, but I answer in English, so <laughs> got to got to start answering in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. No doubt, man. All right, Vogel, I appreciate the time. I guess, uh, you know, any last thoughts, messages? I mean, obviously, I think we're, we're excited to get you back in there, and I know you're ready to rebound. So any 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 uh, thoughts or messages right now? No, it's all about uh, what's going to happen in those next uh, few weeks. Uh, I'm ready to give everything in, and, uh, and that's it. And I want to thank everybody for the support um, online, uh, all the people from back home, all the people around the world. Uh, definitely uh, thank you because uh, because this this gave me a lot of you know powers the the, the fact that I can you know count on everybody. All right, so there was Volkan Uzdemir talking about his matchup with Shogun Hua happening down in Chile. Uh, has a couple ties to the region. Of course, his fiance re revealed that uh, she is from Peru. I did not know that, so that's kind of cool. He speaks a little bit of Spanish. I'm sure the the UFC will end up marketing that that you know he does have some ties to the region. Mastacos. <laughs> I don't think that had anything to do with. Well, Chile I'm sure he's learned that Peru. phrase. Uh, <laughs> Mas. Peruvian tacos. You know what's funny is I, I I actually like this I actually like this fight because I feel like you know Vulcan said look he, he really would have preferred to fight Glover or uh, or, or Gustafson but you know I mean those guys are still in the top right now not that Vulcan's not but like man his run to the top was so quick it that, did seem kind of quick right and I don't mean this is any disrespect to Shogun but it's almost kind of nice to to have him settle back down a little bit you know he he wanted those fights they weren't available so now he kind of drops back down the ladder a little bit. And I think that's okay. Give yourself a little time to continue to develop, continue to get comfortable. Um, he got thrown to the wolves, and he wanted it, as he said. His nickname's No Time, but um, I don't know. I think it's I, I think it's kind of a good matchup. It was one I definitely wasn't expecting, but once it was announced, I was like, yeah, that makes some sense. Yeah, no, I mean, I think there's definitely a lot of pros to it, uh, and I just love I love who a man. I just Legend. I just feel like we're getting near the end of his time, so I want to see him active. Before it gets too long, like, I mean, if he wants to fight once a year, hey, that's his timeline. I'm all good with it, you know. But I just, if he wants to fight more, let's let's do it while we can because I'd rather him fight now more often than to fight, you know, keep prolonging it and have a an extended career yeah. when it's when it's a less Shogun. He's you know? uh, my understanding is like he's constantly battling with knee issues. Like, yeah, you know, that's the whole thing. It's just like making sure his knees are as healthy as possible, and that's when he can fight, you know. Yeah. I, behind the scenes, uh, quick note, just being honest, every time there's a Shogun fight and I, and, and I show up and uh, I get ready to start interviewing him or whatever, I'm like, I forgot how handsome Shogun who is. He's a, he is he's a, a handsome man. He is a handsome man. 
<laughs> he is a handsome man. And he's a dangerous handsome man. Every time, it's like, I forgot how handsome he was. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, you get lost in those eyes. I do, man. It's like the little, it's got the little five o'clock shadow working. It's just, it's, just, it's done just right. Uh, all right, listen, before we did that, uh, it, it, it went down that dark road. If you liked what you were hearing before that exact moment, um, do us a favor. Go into iTunes. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, if, if you got a second, rate us, review us. Uh, leave us five stars if you can. If not, just leave us some feedback. Always like seeing that feedback, positive or negative. Of course, we appreciate the positive much more. Uh, but it does help people find the but podcast we hate as well. The negative. <laughs> When people are searching for MMA, uh, if, if it's got good uh, – it's metrics or what do they call it? I don't know. You know what I'm saying. Metric sexual or metrics. Something? Why are you making it weird? <laughs> Logi- <laughs> not logistics. Analytics? Uh, no. What's the – I'm going back to metric sexual. <sighs> I don't know. You know what the word is. There's a word of the things that drives all the numbers and the systems and the – Algorithms? Algorithms. It helps yeah. you. Ding, 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 ding. Yay! It helps the algorithm, which helps more sounds people find Sounds like us. how there is no fucking sounds like. Sounds uh, like. Uh, 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 yeah, so please do that. And if you want to take it to the next level, you, what you can do is do us a favor. Go to patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. This is where we have finally decided, you know what? We're going to reach out to you and just ask if you got a few dollars in your pocket. We're, we're passing the offering plate around and just saying, listen, <laughs> if you got a few Don't dollars. Don't do what you do in church. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just pass it on. Throw, <laughs> throw a few bucks in there. We'll come back and give you some crackers and some wine. Uh, you know, mm. we just say, hey, listen, if you can help us out, there are certain things we want to do uh, with the podcast, including uh, up the technology. Uh, we are live streaming this as we record. Yes. Uh, it's the first time ever. We're, we're experimenting with that, and we want to do <laughs> And if you, you're watching the archive, you're like, what the hell happened in yes, this section yes. with this complete silence? We're having hey. some successes. We're having some failures. But we want to do that. <laughs> we want to bring more, especially when we're on the road. I mean, this is a good controlled environment for us to experiment in, but when we're on the road, you know, we want to be able to kind of bring you the sights and the sounds. Uh, we want to get an extra headset. To, as we said, those are not cheap. Um, so that we can again maybe set up in the in the, in the post fights and just grab people and you know we want to be more if we're going to be the MMA road show how can we be even more on the road show how can we bring you on the road and that's what we're trying to do um, we we've always tried to do that to a degree and now we're saying how can we up that game even more so um, if you got a few dollars and I get it if you don't we're always going to keep this content free uh, I have had some a couple of ideas of of, of people who said some things that we could do that we only do for our paying subscribers and we might do that uh, just as a nice little bonus because I definitely everybody that that is willing to help us out to feel appreciated uh, because I'm telling you it means the world to me that you would even listen in the first place the fact that you would uh, reach into your wallet and pull out three bucks five bucks ten bucks a month uh, man I can't even tell you what that means to me a guy like Jared Sorensen who uh, gets the big shout out stepping up to the big boy level he this week did. man did. it means all the, I mean it means more than, uh, than than you could ever know but we're trying to do some things we, we, we want to step this game up and uh, it's just it's just myself and cold coffee here man yeah we're, we, uh, we're doing the best we can. So anything you can do to, uh, to help out, patreon.com slash the MMA Road Show. Definitely would appreciate it. Cool. I appreciate it. And, and, and I want to throw an extra plug. Just, you know, the first couple weeks or whatever, Ryan Vinoy, I hope mm-hmm. I don't butcher his name. I didn't even know you can go above the set amounts mm-hmm. as well. So we've set, a, we've set a few just, you know, guidelines or options. But you can set any particular amount that you want. You know, like ultimately, I think you can go in there and probably say a dollar if you really want to. I don't know. I'm, we're still learning the system, but uh, kudos to him, dude's still leading strong. You That's know, he, he's went above if, and beyond. If you're so wealthy I make and you sure. want to spend your parents' trust fund, do it. Do it. We'll do it. Do I mean, it. <laughs> we'll make good use of it. I promise. <laughs> I promise. Not nah, Ryan was awesome, man. We really appreciate what he yeah. did for the show as well. All right, let's talk about uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's comments on pay structure, I thought, really struck a chord, man. I was hoping we would talk about this. You today. know, he said, "Listen, I, I, I want to get rid of win bonuses. I, I, I want to, you know, I, I want. I, I think that's in our, 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 our archaic practice that had a point at one point in time that maybe made sense at one point in time. At one but point, I think the thing he said is like, listen, you know, the whole goal of it is for people to fight harder." Um, and I don't know that it's necessarily accomplishing that. You know, like people in the UFC, they understand their job's on the line. This is their livelihood. Right. They're fighting hard anyway. Like, is that win bonus necessarily driving anybody anymore? And, I mean, I do I do wonder. I mean, it does seem nice to, like, dangle that carrot out there I and mean, have that extra money dangling out there for, you know, if you pick up a win. But, man, we're with these guys and gals week in and week out. I don't see anybody half-assing it. I don't, right. even, I don't see anybody saying, you know, ah, I don't really care if I win or lose. I right. mean, I – I don't know. I 
I, I kind of like the idea, and it's funny because if you if you look at contracts at the highest level, you know we get those pay sheets, and of course those pay sheets aren't 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 complete, but at the highest level, it's almost like once people get to that level, the first thing they do is get rid of their win bonus. The yep. first thing they do. It's a larger amount, but it's it's that's it. You get that lump sum. I, I, I you, you know, know what? I'm having a hard time arguing with Joe Rogan on this one. I yep. think. I mean, can you tell me any reason why it shouldn't be situated? I mean, is it different? I mean, do those lower level guys need to have uh, that 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 carrot dangling out there? Because I don't I don't think so. I yeah. don't think it's. I think if everybody just got a flat rate, uh, I, you know, I mean, hell, this goes back to what Randy Couture used to argue about back in the day. But honestly, right. I think maybe it's an idea that the time has come. Like, let's just get everybody a flat rate and win or lose. I mean, maybe we try it for a year, and if all of a sudden we all realize like that guy was. That guy was dogging it, but I just don't. I mean, if you have have sacrificed so much to get to this point in your life, I just don't see anybody half-assing it. Yeah, and and I completely agree with you. I I just see it as a creative way to bookkeep and to spend less money. They found a way to create, uh, you know, quote incentivize or incent, right. you know, to mm-hmm. to make these guys fight. But all it really is saying, you know, when you boil it down to is. Well, we can either agree to ultimately pay them X amount of dollars, or we can creatively spin it so that we can maybe possibly pay them a lesser amount, you know, if they don't win. You know, whereas if you go well, in and... not you with your tinfoil hat on. Well, well, but think about it. I mean, if you can get a, a fight for a lower rate, if you can buy a car for less money, do you pay... Oh, no, I appreciate your retail value, sir. I want to pay retail for that. But if you know that there's a possibility you can get the same vehicle for lesser money and the person signs off on it, everybody's happier the wiser. Well, but I will, I, I will say I did, always, I did always find it bizarre, like in the case of a draw... Right. Then now all of a sudden the UFC has to spend less money than they had budgeted for a fight. Right. You know what I mean? Because like right. nobody gets a win bonus. Right. So I, I did mean, always find that weird. Like wait, wait, wait. So a draw actually benefits the company because they save money. Like right. that's weird. I I think certainly at least at this point when they try to boil it down to whether a fighter is going to fight more or put more energy behind it, I think that's all BS. I think we realize the guys at this level they want to stay in the UFC and right. they realize that you could be on a win streak. You could have a your last win could. Your last fight could be a win, and you could still get cut. Mm-hmm. So there's no guarantee the fact that you're even winning that you're even you're even going to maintain your position. So I think these guys realize that they're going to fight hard. That that's going to happen regardless. So the fact that you want to tr- try to dangle this out, it just doesn't seem fair anymore. The only reason you wouldn't is because you want to have that option to maybe pay less per fight. If you want to penalize or find a way to penalize guys that say maybe miss weight and the fight can't happen and you still don't want to expend a certain amount of money, right. you know, you could have a, a lesser reduction. Or maybe, you know, if you get a fighter, say I'm a fighter and I'm like, all right, well, you're going to give me $25,000 to come fight, whereas before that might have been $12,500. Um, so say if my opponent doesn't, you know, I'm lucky to maybe get that 12500 But if you have a, it set to where it's like, okay, if the fight happens um, – and say whatever, and you can't get the twenty five. Maybe you start by, or or say I as a fighter set it, set it at like fifty percent or something, or even just like you know a slight, slight reduction. You know if you, you you set qualifying factors that would that if they agree to it, that they're that they're willing to take because it might already be something more. But I think if, if it's a matter of even if a guy comes in and he fucks up, if he messes weight. He already realizes, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not opposed to the fact of, you know, now when the guys get penalized, uh, that can't even make the fight, they get absolutely nothing. I'm not opposed with them still getting a percentage of something. If you make it to fight week and you're there and you've did your training, and you can't make weight, still give them something, but it's severely penalized. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so you know, because I still think that work has been done, but maybe that's the that's the kind of thing that's gonna happen. If they eventually unionize and they do something, fighters are going to get it to a point where they're going to get something regardless of whether they fight or not. Fight or not, when they get if they've went to fight week, if they've met certain guidelines, if you went there and you got there, you flew in, you got there Tuesday, and you worked through Wednesday and you did media, and Thursday you did media shit, but Friday it 
the world just went against you and you couldn't make weight if something didn't happen. I, I, and they can guarantee you they're, they're supposed to come in and they'll be within a certain range mm-hmm. be- before they step on the scale Friday. If they're meeting all those things but something still goes wrong, something out of, out of their control happens and they still – I feel they still should get something for making it even that far. All right, so listen, so much to talk about. You, you hit on a lot of good points here. Now, as you said, first off, if they unionize or something – again, speaking with Cajun Johnson last week, I, I love the idea of this collective bargaining agreement with every organization. Again, I don't think it should be you know the same rules applied to UFC, to Bellator, to one championship, to Legacy, like to Invicta. That's impossible. They can't all meet the yeah, same you can't, standards. You, can't, you certainly can't they put can't, dollar right, standards. They can't like, you all can't, meet the same standards. You can't standards. expect to, be, to meet it. So I love this concept of CBAs with every organization. I I really do love this concept, and I hope it happens. So I think you're dead right. So, all right, let's talk about first the, the situation with the missed weight, right? This, to me, is one of the things that has to be addressed right away, right? right. There's so much inconsistency and uncertainty, and, and there shouldn't be that inconsistency and uncertainty. Um, you know, if it is – I mean, maybe it is a situation where, like, listen, we can get you on the card next week, and, and because we can get you on the card next week, we're not going to pay you your whole show purse now, but we'll give you – Ten grand, twenty grand, whatever yeah. it is, and we'll rebook you next week. But you know what? That I mean? would be better. But that than should something. all. It should, but it should he, be a case by case basis. Right. Like, there what if they walk guarantee. out? What if they walk out? They're like, okay, uh, I'm going to take your promise to book me next week, and they walk outside and they trip and fall, and now they're injured. And if they absolutely have nothing, go. I like the idea of giving them a little something with the extra carrot. So maybe they give a lesser. Right. Like if they say, okay, you could take option A. We're going to give you, you know, fifty uh, percent of what your purse was going to be. But we're also going to book you, so now you get your extra purse, so that if something crazy happens, they get in a car accident two days later, and like, I'm sorry, I can't fight. They have something. They've yeah, you already almost you, you almost in, man. That's a great point. They like, put, you need, so they've already put effort out. They've already need to have expended a re- cost at this. point. You need to have you know? a retroactive policy that that considers everything. They're like, listen. Right. It, you know, we'll book you on the next week, and if for some reason injury occurs, of course, then I mean, then you could accuse people, guys, of faking injuries. But yeah, I mean, if, if an but, injury occurs, you know, people then you will get the check shit purse. out. Like, oh yeah, you, know, I mean, you like, gotta go to that. That's the kind of shit. If somebody faked something and and it got proven, you're done. Your yeah, contract's you're done. fucking done. Like, I don't think any of these guys would do something like that. I don't think so either. You Again, know? and knowing the character, not saying people. it couldn't happen, but yeah, seeing the guys that we've seen do what we do, do what they do. Oh, and when you get that, I don't close, see it happen. When you've gone all the way through a training camp and you're like looking for that. Yeah release so to speak you know and you don't get it. all right so the first thing that needs to happen is that, that that needs to be all addressed what happens when you when you don't get to fight because your opponent doesn't make weight that needs to be addressed that needs to right. be clearly sped up but you hit on a great point what about the guy like a uriah hall who you know all week long like seemed to be okay like check it right so and i think there should be i think in that situation it should maybe go back to where you check in with weight you know what i mean like right you can't like if, you know, if you're meeting guidelines if you're exactly. if you're check marking if somebody if on check tuesday mark, you're good wednesday good. you're good you know good. If, if you come in at 240 for your middleweight fight on tuesday yeah okay now the, there's yeah. a problem but if everything's good and that in was the last incentive. minute that would give the the push for these guys to come in closer yeah. to their weight you know that gives them a reason to show up Closer to the weight, you know. I mean, I, I think because now you know, if my body shuts down, I'm still taken care of because I right. was I met I every. Think, I think a lot of these guys they, they do it. They're like, oh, we're or, and gals, whatever. They're like, I'm I'm over, but I know I'll get there. I'll know I'll get there, but they know that there's the possibility. The worst case right now, they're like, well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get paid. So that there's kind of that fear factor where right. they push themselves. But if they realize that, hey, if you just meet the certain guidelines, you come in within this range. You check mark so that if, should the fight for some reason fall out, you're guaranteeing that you're going to get access to X amount of whatever this agreed contract is. But if you come in and you're outside that range, you miss the first check mark. You're not guaranteed. Boy, that, I think it would push a lot of these fighters. And to, that helps to, to the do. UFC. It helps the UFC it helps and it helps the, UFC the fighters. And, the fighter. and see, that's, right. that's what I think in every one of these steps along the way. I'm one of those guys that – you know, and that's what scares me about this whole process. I feel like it's going to be this this huge battle, and right. you know, I I don't want it to be that way. Like, I where lo- there's a clear winner and there's a clear right. loser. I love finding solutions. They're like, you know what? That helps you, and that helps me, right. and that would that would help the USC lose less fights if they knew that if people were hitting these check marks all week long, they were right. good. Right. But I'm definitely down to getting to the point where fighters have a clear understanding of that they're getting a certain amount, that they're getting pay, that they're getting, you know, something. Because I think then it gives them that extra push that 
if anything, that extra just, hey, we're here for you. Mm -hmm. You're doing your part, and we're going to do our part. And we don't have an easy way out of not giving you money. Yep. Like, this whole half pay uh, thing is giving the UFC a clear out on clear out on their obligation of paying what they worst case right. are planning on paying for this person fighting. They could set up another structure, but I th I like the idea of you know upping set pay. I can see where that would almost maybe if they're like oh well if we have to come out with a set amount, I guarantee limits would almost like start lower again because they're always going to want to. This is any business that's trying to. Nobody wants to just go into business and spend and be all think, money. I'm going to spend all my money. Of course you know, not. You're going to try to find creative ways. You think and USA Today think comes to us every year and they're like, bro. We had a little bit of extra money. We want to get rid of use it. Use it. Use it, bro. No, I don't know. But that's that's what I see with the whole structure now of the win and show money is the fact that they found a creative way to put a spin on not having to spend as much money that they have available to give this fighter, but they found a creative way that, oh, hey, you know, yeah, we're going to use it and we're going to spin it and say, oh, this is this is going to make them want to fight harder. They want to win anyways. Right. I mean, like. Well, let me. So let me ask you this then. So here's my thought, and it's it's not it's not novel. It's been done before. Victory Fighting Championship did this on the regional right. scene. Um, but a finishing bonus, a finishing bonus, because right, yeah. fans like finishes, right? Submissions, knockouts. Right. It's like the long ball in <laughs> baseball, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. A hard fought decision back and forth. It can be great, but fans love knockouts and fans love submissions. So right. I wonder. Now, if if we got rid of it, we didn't go we didn't go all the way up to 100 percent, right? But let's say maybe we went up to instead of 50 and 50, we went up to like 80 percent guaranteed, 90 percent guaranteed maybe, and then that last 10 percent only comes if you get a finish, you know, a, a finish bonus basically. Is that? I mean, I guess that would. I like the idea. I like. I do like the idea of a finish bonus. I still. I mean, I think if they took away, say, the three, so say three fights. They have for performance, performance, fight of the night. So $150,000 that they have to play right. around with. All right, say there's 15 fights. 200000 because you get uh, fight of the night is two times, so you get 200000 Right, so 200000 right? right? So 200000 there's 13 fights, mm -hmm. 12 to 13 fights. All right, you could easily take that 200000 if you get rid of those other bonuses, and if you get a finish in your fight, you could easily get a $10,000 check just for putting a finish. Sure. That I think most fighters would be happy knowing that hey, if I get a finish, I'm getting a ten thousand check. Because right now they get a finish and like I hope that's the best one. Right. I hope that's good enough to get the nod to get the agreement. Whereas, all right, if we come in and we're giving you a a, a, a better set amount, all right, say you normally would get twenty four and twenty four, so you're getting forty eight thousand. We're coming. We're going to say hey, we're going to give you. All right, but let me but let me see this. Let me see this. I don't want to interrupt your flow. But I am thinking this. If we're doing the math right, because it's got to stay under budget for the UFC, right. right? Let's say two guys are making 24 and 24, right? right? One guy makes 48, one guy makes 24, right? Because right. one guy gets his win bonus. If you're doing this new system, now you got two guys that make 36 and 36, right? I mean, they can't 36 total. Because you can't – because if you went from 24 and 24 to both guys making 48, you just went up huge in your payroll. Right. So now you got to do 30, like 36 guaranteed, 36 guaranteed – but plus, also, plus, if you take that, if you take that two hundred thousand, it doesn't equal out to twenty fights. No, I agree. Twenty but, people. But what so I'm you're getting is, money back. You're getting some money back on the fact that you're not spending out two hundred thousand in bonuses. But what I'm saying is, just to play devil's advocate, I mean, right. if let's say that example you used twenty four and twenty four, which is a pretty nice little mid mid level salary, right? Mm -hmm. Would a fighter be willing to say because in that situation, me and you are making twenty four and twenty four each. You win, you get thirty six. I get thirty six. You made twelve less than you would have under the old system, I make 12 more than I would have under the old system. I'm probably pretty happy. Are you happy because you know your money is guaranteed? Or are you pissed because you feel like you lost out on 12 grand? Well, you would probably, you, if you, well, because you got to keep the math the same, right? I mean, if, because if we're going to live this fantasy life and we're going to say, this is the way it should be, and I don't know, I should well, say I mean, life, I think they would, this theoretical yeah, life. I think they would probably have to realize that maybe revenue lines would probably change. Um, but yeah, because you can't add 30% or whatever it would be. Right. Right. But if, so say if, if, if you take away the 200,000 that goes towards bonus, say there's 24 or 12 fights, mm -hmm. 13 fights, say there's six finishes. 
that sixty thousand that you're spending out instead of a hundred and f- uh, oh, I'm that's good with extra, that. The finish bonus, I'm good with. Wait, I'm good with that. But that's a hundred and forty thousand dollars now that you could play around a little bit. And Only one of those bit. two say that two in this situation. One guy might get forty six thousand. The right. other guy get might thirty. You know, thirty six. Or there's some sort of discretionary angling that you can do, you know, mm-hmm. or something. But as for the UFC, I can, you know, it would probably come to a fighter where the fighter might be like, I get it. I'm cool with it because even if I lose, I'm getting money that I wouldn't normally right. get. So sometimes it wins, sometimes I lose. But I can see where the UFC, like, say if the only there's only six finishes, they're like, well, we have an extra 140000 See, I just wonder, like, you know, is that, that going to be a problem? Like, you know, Project Spearhead or whatever else. If everybody's in the room together, you know, or the virtual right. room together, but there's and, no and you lay it just, out there. Like, well, I guess, I guess in that case, yeah, if it is 24 and 24, but how often do we see guys – Matching up against guys that get the exact same pay. Not, you're not. It never not, happens. Yeah. It never Unless happens. It's like a tough finale where everybody makes the same thing. Where somebody in that situation, in most cases, guys have their own particular contract and they don't even know until after the fact. You right. know. So I could see if I'm going in you and I haven't negotiated where I get forty grand, and you're coming in there and you get sixty grand. I win. I get my forty grand. You still get your sixty. You lost whatever. Maybe I get a finish and I get an extra or whatever. But that just that just get, puts more onus on them to negotiate the original best contract that they yep. can get, you know. But it's an interesting discussion, man. I, it is. I, I it do is. think there's I, it's time. There's time for a change. I, I do think there's time for a change. I do think it's, it is time for a change. I should say. I do think, especially with you know the whole missing weight thing, yeah. like that stuff has to. Well, think about it now. And I guess go back the other. You have guys now that get the win bonus that still make less than their opponent that lost. Right, of course. So, I mean, it's the same sort of situation what? now, I guess, when you think about that. You know, it's not like, I beat you, I should ultimately get more pay than you. And it's like, it's already not that way. So, Yeah, and I don't mean necessarily that the guy deserves more. I just, right. are you willing to take less? So, it's it's, but it's an agreed contract at that point. It's not like you get less. You agreed to whatever your set amount, so you get oh, your yeah. set I amount. Oh, yeah, I mean, once, you know, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, yeah. it's all good. It's just that first... Yeah, that first fight or two where you're like, yeah. okay, hey guys, we got a new system, and you're like, I would have made this. Yeah, you know, so that's why they just cut the roster and start from scratch. <laughs> start from scratch. <laughs> All right, uh, listen, another big fight that was announced this week: Cub Swanson versus Frankie Edgar, the rematch. Um, I gotta say, man, um, I, I, I mean, I love, I love Frankie Edgar. I, you know, I always say, yeah, when people do. say, when, when people say, hey, who's your favorite fighter? You know, I always, to be honest, I always lean towards Cowboy Cerrone. Like, I just yep. love, I love his attitude. I love his fighting style. Uh, again, I mean, we're not, it's it's hard to say, it's, it's, since we get a chance to talk to literally everybody on the roster, I mean, Brian Ortega's become one of my favorites lately. Uh, yeah. Max Holloway's a mon. I mean, we, 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 get, we get so lucky that we get to talk to all these people. So, uh, you know, more of them are, are. Yeah, I hate that question. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult question oh, to answer, right? Oh, it's so but, but hard. But if, 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 if you don't want to give the. Well, it's really difficult because, like, if you just want somebody to just leave you alone, you know what I mean. You have to give them an answer. Yeah. Like, Cow- I, I go with Cowboy Cerrone, but dude, Frank Yeager's got to be right there. Like, oh yeah. If there was a guy that I want my kid to be like, hey, especially Eli, yeah, we like that guy. Yeah. When it's like, who, who's like, if they, ask, it'd be better if they're like, who's the guy that's really respected or yeah. something like. I mean, like Edgar would definitely be oh. hands down. Like, I always go to a lot of times. I go to Matt Brown because he's an Ohio guy. I try to use Ohio fighters because I'm just like. I'm like, bro, I love them all. I like all of them. I like, I love chatting with like Ray Nelson. I love chatting with Derek Lewis. I love chatting with any of these guys that want to take the time to like spend some time out of the day. Yep. I'm like, bro, you are like my favorite fighter. You took time out of your day to make sure that I can get what I need, and you're doing what you do, enable me to have to do a your living. Job, yep. To do so your I'm like, job. I fucking love all you guys. So I, I hate that question because it makes me pick a. Uh, like a favorite at that moment, you know, and it's so I always just go back to like my Ohio guys, just because I'm a fucking diehard Buckeye. So I always choose Ohio guys. You well, know, Frankie's got to be right there on anybody. Frankie list. So, is so up there. <laughs> so with prefacing that with how much respect and honor we have for Frankie, were were you almost shocked and a little bit scared that this is happening? Because I was like, man, w- man, we sat right there with Frankie when he decided. I mean, all the respect in the world that he's like, hey. I know I got a title fight, but if I'm the best in the world, I got to beat everybody, and I'm going to go fight Ortega. And I mean, I, you know, as as a fight fan, you're like, damn right, you know. Yeah. But I remember sitting there, like, thinking from the business side, thinking from, you know, it's like, wow, man, like, dude, you're putting a lot on the line right here, guaranteed yeah. title shot. Obviously, it didn't go his way, and 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 not only did it not go his way, but he got rocked, and now he's coming back, you know. This quickly and fighting Cub Swanson. What is the date on that? 
April 9th. Oh, you're going to make me say it. I'm going to be wrong. Why not? Cause, yeah, because that's what, like less than three months, huh? Yeah. April 21st. I was going to say 19th. That's the May dates. I get the dates in my head. April 21st. Now, here's the deal. Atlantic City. It's in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It's right down the road from Tom's Got River. You. He wants to be on there. He definitely wants. And I get it, man. He wants to be in Jersey. And I get it. But, man, this is Cub Swanson. Like, this is not – like, let's say they put you up official? against uh, – It's official. Wow, so they let's say they put yet. you up against a, a – no, they put them they – on, they have them on USC.com. They have them in the last spot. Uh, I'm just looking on Cub's thing. Like, if you go to the fighter profile, it doesn't list oh, they don't on, have his, it there? on his fighter Bizarre. profile. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I I was a little surprised by this. I, I'm, I, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I, I'm, I don't want to see – Frankie get get lit up again, and I'm 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 I don't even know how to express it properly. Cold coffee. I'm just I I love Frankie Edgar, man. I think he is the man. He's a legend. He's a, he's a UFC Hall of Famer. Legend. He's somebody that I would tell my my kid to pattern his life after. You know what I'm right? saying? Like he is the man. But if 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 I could say like, hey man, please go take a couple months off, man. Like they'll 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 be back in in the Northeast somewhere. I would. I mean, there's no easy fight necessarily in the UFC, but this is not. I mean, this is not a can. This is this is Cub Swanson, man. This is this is a beast of a contender, and uh, man, I I mean, it's an incredible addition to the card. It's going to be incredible for the ticket sales. Why is the card laid out that way on the UFC.com? Is it because they haven't broke it down into like bro? They're, they're, they're two, two, three. That's <sighs> all twelve fights, but it hasn't. It doesn't give a clear like clearly when I see it at the bottom like that, it makes it seem like it's going to be like. The, the the fight pass featured prelim like U- UFC.com is is like supposedly it's doing a redesign is what I'm get what I be told, told is that is that they're doing a redesign but I'm like sense. Jesus there's some seriously fundamental stuff that is just not working so when I see when I look at this I think most people will train when they look at how if they went to their site and they see it on the bottom right that's like the third fight on the the fight pass prelims or something know, you know that's, that's not going to happen so I'm sure something's going to Something's gonna change, but dude, that is a that's massive. That's a that's a heck of a fight. But I, I mean, I could see Frankie. That is such a quick turnaround. <sighs> that's what I'm saying. That's such a quick turnaround. But I mean, like, that's probably the fight where it was like, I don't know if they said something before, like, hey, by the way, this is what's in the books. This is what's gonna happen. And he was like, well, I could stay on this fight. I could, I could fight on this card. Well, no, I want to fight. It's I mean, a fight it's night card. They would never put a title fight there. They would never put. A title well, no, no, fight no I, but but I guess the fact of, of like of just being able to, yeah, true. But I guess if if it's an option of either, he's not going to, I guess, not fight for a title right. as opposed to, you know, hold off for this fight, which I'm sure it's probably. Well, I guess it wouldn't be his first pick. Always. Fighting for some, <laughs> fighting for some gold or, or getting close to the gold is always going to do it, but. I don't know. I mean, I'm just worried. I'm just, I'm just going on record, man. I, I love Frank Yeager. I love Frank Yeager. This one scares me. This I mean, me. but granted, it's not like the dude's been knocked out a bunch of times. No, that's he's true. taken damage. True. Yeah, that's true. He's taken damage, but this was like what his first time he's ever been. He's ever been yeah, knocked out. First time. So I mean, I guess you give him that in the sense that his 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 brain is taking damage. I mean, like any of these guys has taken what do they call it? Uh, CT. What is that? Concussions or they've had traumatic, some, yeah, oh, whatever. Yeah, traumatic, yeah. So he's he's taken damage regardless of whether he's actually finally been knocked out. But who knows? I guess you know after that it's finally happened. Maybe we'll see a little bit of a degraded in the fact that he hasn't given his brain a lot of time to take care. But again, it was quick. It was it happened, and he didn't take a lot of damage after it. Maybe it's not a big deal that we're we're worrying more than we need to worry about it. But that is a super quick turnaround. But how can you not use him when you go there? And yeah. I guarantee he was chomping at the bit. I mean, when I when I of look at he was. when I look at that card, I'm like, oh, the card stat. April. It's a great card, but that is probably one of the fights, if oh, not that's the, the biggest fight. fight oh, that's but I'm the looking fight. at that's, that's the, the one I'm looking for. I'm certainly looking a lot more forward to that card, that fight, than Kevin Lee and Barboza. Yeah, I think so. I think Kevin Lee and Barboza is exciting. But I know that's Edgar, point, but that's, Edgar and Swanson is going to deliver – has more guarantee that it's going to deliver a fucking I'll, bash. I will only go so far as to say, like, it's a coin flip for me. Like, I, you know what I mean? As so, for who I, will win? No, no, no. To, to which one I'm more excited oh, about. Oh, okay. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I can't say that, like, Barbosa Lee's way more up there. Like, yeah. I, so, I can see. I mean, it's 50-50 for me. 
It's it's ah, I guess their sites have yeah, messed up. Like if they're in the main card, how they have their layout? See how the layout? They have them in the big window. Right. Normally, wouldn't I? Don't think they would be Dude, over here on the right hand side. But whatever. But no, as for bad. but as it's for bad. fights, when I look on on the rest of that card, I mean, even Branch and Santos is a good fight. <sighs> Sterling, all this. I mean, that that's all good. Sterling and, all. and Johns. Hooker and Miller. Hooker and Miller is a good one. Maybe Latov and Sasaki. Like I'm, you know, I love but the man that Edgar Swanson. That is yeah, yeah. right there. I mean, and, and in terms of ranking, it has more value than a number three and a number seven if you're using the UFC That's rankings. True. That's true. I mean, you have two higher numbered fighters that are actually going at it. But April, by the way, April is sick. If you're a UFC fan, two twenty three in Brooklyn. That's a good one. Off the charts, ridiculous. Yep. Then we go to Glendale. That fight card is loaded, and then Atlantic City is loaded too. I mean, I know we've been talking about some slow months and some slow times. There's that's so a many. There are so many good fights. Aspen Ladd and Leslie Smith. That's gonna oh, be a good fight too. That's a good fight too. Dude, I mean, that's a really, really good card. But I mean, oh, wow, Edgar Swanson. Just knowing those two guys and the way that they're fighting right now, I mean. That's going to be – see, with Lee and Barboza, they're going to be feeling each other out. I mean, they're, they're very dangerous. They're dangerous strikers that I see trying to keep that time a little bit on the outside until they're, they're like, feeling each Barbosa other out. trying to land a leg kick. Yeah, I mean, they're – Lee trying to get inside. Gonna, there's going to be a lot more feeling out, whereas Edgar and Swanson are just going to brawl. Yep. They're just going to just throw. And, I mean, like, I guarantee that uh, – I just feel like that one, for me, that's the fight I'm probably the most excited out of that whole that's card. That's a sick fight. Uh, should say, sick. by the way, good to see Cub back. Uh, Cub was a free agent. Uh, yeah. By the way, I was told that he had a couple offers out there from multiple different organizations. And why wouldn't he? Solid, solid offers, too, by the way. Not necessarily exactly what he was looking for, but solid offers. He made his way back to USC. But uh, good for him, man. It, it, from, from, from what I understand behind the scenes, he fully explored free agency to its potential. I mean, he got offers. He, you know, he, he got it all out there, so good for him. Yeah. Uh, Listen, and congrats I, on his new addition. That's right. Yeah, he's a family man. He's now. got a family man. He's, he's got to take care of his family now. Things change. Yeah, things change. You never sleep in again. You just <laughs> pray for Thursday so you can go day drink. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, a uh, quick quick note. Uh, kind of outside the MMA world. Did you see the the, the story from Gareth A. Davies that, that the UFC is going after Anthony Joshua? That Zufa Boxing is going after. I didn't really Anthony read Joshua? into it, but I, I saw that. And it makes complete sense. Yeah, no, it does make complete sense. And Dana White has kind of always uh, yeah. admitted he's a huge Anthony Joshua fan. Anthony Joshua, one of the biggest superstars on the planet right now in terms Doesn't of get combat much bigger sports. Than that. Uh, it's funny, so check this out. But I, I did want to share this to our roadshow listeners. So I reached out to Dana, and I was like, "Well, let me get some comment, right?" So I texted him, <laughs> and I said. Let me let you know. In fact, let me see if I can find the exact text just to find it. Let's see. Yeah, if y'all didn't know, Junk just just he just hits up DW. He just got that text action. So I said, "Hey Dana, hope all is well. Wanted to reach out for comment on this Gareth A. Davies story that you're going to Anthony Joshua's fight in Cardiff and looking to sign him to a promotional deal." That was my text, and I actually linked the story as well, just in case you hadn't seen the story, mm-hmm. you could click on it, and that's. And what I received back was. An emoji. An emoji. <laughs> was it a poop emoji? What? <laughs> was it the poop emoji? It was not. It was not. So I'm not was sure what cat, emoji the is. So with, the cat with the hearts and the eyes? No, it's just a It's a typical little yellow head emoji. Okay. Uh, the left eye is wide open. The right eye is closed. Oh, he's winking. And the tongue is sticking out. Oh, he's the, the goofy so one. So I, eh. really, I didn't really know what like that tongue meant. tongue in cheek. I think so, that's like tongue in okay, cheek. Okay, so I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. So... I I I copied and pasted it into Google, and I got this back <laughs> from Emojipedia.com. That is the winking face with tongue emoji. Yes, okay. It's okay. a face showing a stuck-out tongue winking at the same time, which I think is pretty much what I just described. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Now, I'm told by Emojipedia.com that that is used in an attempt to be wacky, zany, or otherwise joking. Yeah. I, I still don't. I think that what. I think that emoji goes over real big in like uh, Japanese culture. I think that, they do a lot that, of time where they stick their tongue out and they're like, ah, eh, they're kind of like you're pulling their leg, you know, like they're like. See, ah. that's what I want. So, so that that was the response. I didn't, uh, you know, we haven't written about this, and I'll be honest. If I was writing, Does I would Dana probably often just, emoji you back, or is this was this first attempt? He's to, pretty to like, str- Well, I'll, I'll, he I'll, normally 
let uses me let words, me let right? me well he usually uses words unless it's a, to me if he emojis back that's essentially no comment that's essentially yeah. no comment he's kind of trying to give me a little hint to to point me in the right yeah. in fact if this clarifies my response to him was your emoji game is always strong that's that what you my, said. That's back what, that was my response. You should have sent him an equally cryptic emoji yeah. back yeah. to him. <laughs> <laughs> the, uni- the, the fucking rainbow yeah. unicorn one or something. In, 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 in 15 years of dealing with Dana or whatever it is at this point, when he wants to comment, he comments. Yeah. When he doesn't, that's a no comment. Dude, next time so you it's a no to- comment, but I figure for the roadshow listeners, they would want to hear. Yeah. So uh, if you're looking to, to get in there, it was a winking face with tongue that was u- that is generally used in an attempt to be – Wacky, zany. I love it. Or otherwise, Next time you need to send the most awkward emoji back. Just, I'm saying there's that there's like a rainbow one. unicorn one <laughs> that you could just send back to him and he could just be like, what the, the hell fuck? is that, Morgan? And you could just be like, bro, you started it. At that point, he like calls you like just to make sure you're, <laughs> you're like, like, are you okay, dude? Like, <laughs> bro, he sent me the gay unicorn back. You know, he's <laughs> like, I clearly sent you the one that said meant like tongue in cheek, <laughs> whatever, and you sent me. The happy unicorn emoji. Well, speaking of USC officials. You should have sent the fucking poop one back the to The poop him. one back. The like, smiling that was, turd. That was, that was shit. That was shit. <laughs> shit comment. Uh, well, speak, speaking of uh, USC officials, uh, while I was in London, I did, get, I did get a chance to speak with Dave Shaw, who is the uh, in charge of the international and content for uh, all of the USC. And I figured we didn't really use it much. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't use it on the roadshow at all, and we didn't really feature it much on the site. So I figured, you know what? Uh, here's the perfect place to play it. You can hear about some things. We, we touched on a lot of things about um, kind of what's going on around the world in different markets, so I thought this would be the perfect place to play it. So uh, Dave Shaw, Mr. International Mr. himself. Mr. International. Joe Carr. Joe Carr done left for the World Surf League, man. Uh, good things happening, Joe Carr. Good. good good for you, Joe. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> but Dave Shaw, a, a stand-up man. always enjoyed talking to him, and I uh, appreciate his time in London. He was very, very busy. Uh, but he answered a lot of questions, and uh, – Here's what he had to say about uh, what's going on in the uh, the rest of the world. MMA Junkie in London for UFC Fight Night 127, and we're honored to be with Mr. International himself, Dave Shaw. You made the surprise announcement today that Dublin not happening anymore. Of course, it was never made official, but it was talked about going to Liverpool instead. Yeah. Can you just kind of talk to us about, I guess, how that happened and, uh, you know, assuming we're going to get Darren Till on the card, hopefully, but just how that all came together? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you know how it works. I mean, we typically hold a number of dates for a variety of reasons. For us, you know, it, this made sense. I mean, Till has been very vocal about wanting to fight in Liverpool pool. It's an exciting time for us because he's a, a dynamic fighter that I think has got a really high ceiling in the UFC. And, uh, you know, he's going to be excited. The people of the UK and Liverpool certainly are going to be excited. Um, so it's something that I think, you know, is on Dana, Dana's radar for a long time. And it's one of those situations where the stars have aligned and it's given us the opportunity to go. So listen, we're going to go to Dublin at some point. There's no doubt about that. We'll also go to a variety of other cities, uh, not only in the UK and Ireland, but around Europe. Um, so we'll get there. There's no worries about that. Nice. Michael Bisping has talked about having his retirement fight in the UK. He's here in town this week as well. Yeah. Any chance maybe that he ends up on that card as well? Yeah, well, I guess there's a chance. I mean, you know, what did Dana say on UFC tonight that Bisping always gets his way? So we'll see. Um, I think for Bisping, one of the other things I heard him say this week was the fact that, you know, he's very cautious about who he wants to fight. He doesn't want to say anything untoward or anything that he's going to regret for the rest of his career once his fighting days are done. So, I mean, I think that's a virtual impossibility. We all know that everybody <laughs> fights is going to be one of those situations. But for him, you know, pioneer of MMA, he's done so much as, you know, one of the one of the key and only champions for, for British MMA. Uh, he deserves to kind of go out on, on terms that, that maybe he dictates. So, listen, whether it's, I don't know, I mean, there's a lot of jawing with Rockhold right now. Uh, Weidman seems like a possibility. I, I just, I don't know, it's not up to me, but I think as a guy who embodies all, you know, the notable characteristics of British MMA, whether it's, you know, it's grit, perseverance, fighter IQ, quick wit, uh, I mean, he deserves to have an opportunity to go out and, you know, walk into the sunset on his own terms. Kind of last thing on that, you touched on Dublin, but of course the Irish MMA fans, as soon as the announcement was made, they're thinking, well, what does that mean for us? I mean, do we get a USC this year? Do we have to wait another year? What, what's, what's the call there? Well, you know, when we look to our event schedule for this year, we're in London this week, another sold-out event here. 
uh, Liverpool in May. And then our approach the rest of the year is it's all kind of up in the air right now. So there's definitely a possibility we could go to Dublin, but we've also got a number of other things on our, our radar. You know, keep working hard on France. Russia is always a possibility. We want to get to Scandinavia again. Um, so at this point, we don't have anything concrete to share, but always on the map. I mean, what, what Connor has done specifically and, and Kavanaugh has done in Ireland for our sport, uh, we'll always be grateful for, and they're always going to be on the short list. Fantastic. You mentioned Russia there. I did want to ask you, I mean, there are reports out there that there's dates in September. I wanted to ask you, I mean, if there's anything you can share, number one, and number two, what kind of event that could be? Because, you know, we're going into Brooklyn, Habib Nurmagomedov yeah. uh, fighting for a title. I mean, is this the type of car that could potentially host a championship fight? Or is this, you know, the hour restrictions make it difficult? What kind of card would that be? And is there anything concrete you can share? Well, okay, so first of all, you know, when it comes to the hour restrictions, I think we've got a few notable examples of, you know, how easy it is sometimes to buck the trend, right? Stockholm in the middle of the night, uh, last year in Manchester in the middle of the night. So nothing's, nothing's impossible. When it comes to Russia, you know, it's an interesting conversation. I think, you know, barring uh, any perceived kind of geopolitical risk for us, the opportunity to get to Russia is huge. You think about a couple key areas around the world where they are key frontiers that we really haven't invested heavily in that we're just starting to. One is China, through Kevin Chang's leadership in uh, the Shanghai and, and the Singapore offices. And I think what we've done with PPTV there and uh, as well with the Shanghai event in November, I mean, that was the best first case study on what we can do in, in, in an area like this. Get back to the, the Russia conversation. Russia makes sense for a lot of reasons. I mean, first of all, with Telesport and Match TV, we've got a broadcast partner that takes us all across the country on, on free air. And that's important because we want to be able to connect with our fans 365 days a year. Number two, from a digital perspective, our numbers on YouTube specifically have been off the charts in the last couple of years. And then number three, you think about the countries that have the greatest or the largest rosters of athletes. Number one is the U.S., number two is Brazil, number three is Russia. So it gives us a wealth of talent to draw on if we do want to go there. Now, I think getting into the region can be tough. Uh, you got to have a key local partner. you got to have a local partner that understands the media landscape, that also can connect well with key stakeholders in the region. So we got to set up that first. Uh, but Russia is, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely on the horizon. Is it imminent? Uh, I wouldn't say that. But, you know, we're really gunning to be there later this year, 2019. Nice. You mentioned France as well. Yep. Got to ask you about that. We talk about it every time, but what is the update? Are, are we making progress? Is there a potential that you know we're finally going to get MMA legalized this year? Yeah, I mean, listen, we are we are making progress. It's a different situation from Russia in that in France we've obviously got political headwinds, and for us, you know, we want nothing more to be there. I mean, there's not many territories after you know you get through Victoria and Western Australia. Uh, in Australia. You get through Ontario a number of years ago. You get into New York State. I mean, France is the last big opportunity for us that we are legally not allowed to be in. So, you know, we've got a good digital relationship with Altice. We've got fighters like Tom Ducanois, obviously Francis Naganu, uh, even Manon Fierro, who uh, won the World Amateur Championships in November. Uh, these are all kind of key uh, pillars that can help us get our way into France. But we need to be able to navigate the political landscape. And, and that, as you know, could be a long and onerous process. Uh, but we're working hard in the region with our government relations firm. We've got you know a great team at IMG that's helping us. Uh, we just don't know where it stands. I mean, we're making progress, but you know, you, you just never know where you stand. Nice. We're globe trotting, but this yep. is the EMEA region. We've talked a lot about Europe. Let's talk about the ME and the A. I mean, yeah. Middle East, uh, Africa. Yeah. What are the possibilities there? Any any chance we're going back to to Abu Dhabi or something else in the region? And are there enough African athletes now that maybe something uh, in, in that continent is possible? I mean, always something that we're 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 looking at. Um, I think to suggest that it could happen anytime soon, i.e., this year, I think is a bit far fetched. We've got we've got bigger fish to fry right now. Uh, we have we've been focusing on on other regions. I think you know, like you know, Adesanya, like Naganu. I mean, there's some key guys. Even Jimmy Manoa. Um, there's some key guys that can help us get into to various regions. But it's uh, it's not it's not high on the priority list. But but, you know, I think something we can look forward to maybe in 20, 2019. Nice. Well, I appreciate everything that you shared. I guess sum it up for me if you could. I mean, you know, Dana White has said that, you know, last year was the best in company history. And, you know, in the United States, we're in the middle of a television deal negotiation. Everybody's talking about what's the health of the sport, what's the direction of the sport. But for you that focuses so much on the international market, I mean, what's, what's the summary right now, the status of, of, of the EMEA region? I mean, is it a growth opportunity? Is it stagnant right now? Or wait, How do you see it all? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, great question. I think first and foremost, you know, we're very bullish on the region. And one of the key benefits from, you know, being in the Endeavor family is the fact that we've got these very sophisticated media sales guys. And so we're able to cover every different region. I mean, look at the strength of the relationships, you know, with MediaPro in Sweden, and, or in Spain, sorry, and, and, and Viasat in Scandinavia. Uh, you know, we just kicked off a, a big relationship with Polsat in Poland. So for us, first and foremost, it's content relationships because whether we've got an event or not, we want to be able to connect with our fans all around the year. Uh, number two, I think a big priority for us is to continue to focus on the event schedule, which we just talked about. Number three, um, you know, our, our athletes are key, first and foremost. I mean, we want to make sure that they, whether it's, you know, UFC production or our production or content partners in the region, we're creating meaningful content around our athletes that can tell stories about their lives and their training regimens and so on. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that uh, that's that's been mentioned is, you know, this UFC gym relationship and the fact that we're kicking off a big relationship. With, with UFC gyms to continue our global expansion in that. So I think we're very bullish on the region. We've talked about France. We've talked about Russia. There's a lot of big opportunities for us. So irrespective of what happens in the U.S., yes, it'll give us some clarity on what goes ahead. But, man, we're pushing forward uh, with, with reckless abandon on, uh, on this territory for sure. That was Dave Shaw, Mr. International himself. Always appreciate him giving us a few minutes while we're on the road. Uh, all right, a couple things I want to talk about there. First of all, uh, won't commit to Russia. He won't really admit uh, – admit. <laughs> he won't really commit to Russia. But everything that we're hearing, uh, it sounds like Russia is, I mean, like – Done deal. If you if done you watched deal. if you watched Junkie Radio when they were talking to Artem, it was like it was already a done deal. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. we're coming, we're coming. So like people are pretty much already planning. Sounds like it's it. gonna happen in September. Uh, I think which is awesome, man. It's it's first of all, it's one of the places in the world that I've always wanted to visit that I haven't been able to. Second of all, it's a huge market. If for you the do UFC. if you do Chile, I get Moscow. You get Moscow. No. Yeah. Even if that's a fight night, we're doing two. I don't. Know, I'll pay. <laughs> I'll pay out of pocket to go to that one. I want. I've never been to Russia. You know what's funny? I was talking to um, I was talking to the guys over in England. Uh, it's funny, like I think for Americans especially, like Russia, it's it's like it's I, I don't want to say like the restricted place, or, you know what I mean? Like there's oh, yeah. still a little bit, isn't there something kind of? I mean, th there's still me, something. I was a few years old. Whatever. I'm a few years older than you, so I mean, like for me, I'm coming up through like the Cold War and coming up through like all that sort of stuff where you used to have to like. They talked about the the nuclear age, you know. And I remember they were always like the bad guys, so there's always been like this sort of mystical like forbiddenness to right. Russia you That's know and I then once, the same way. and then once the cold war sort of turned out to be a bunch of bullshit and all that and the and the wall was dropped and everything you know and the soviet union broke up Ro moscow and russia became this place that just seemed more um just open a place that I wanted to always visit once I realized that half the shit I was being told as a kid was was bullshit and then you realize that oh hey we there's this country of all these incredible people with beautiful women and good food and sites everything that I've ever seen from anybody especially like I love Anthony Bourdain mm -hmm. anytime they go and you see Russia is just like wow looks that amazing. place looks amazing it's like I wish I'd never you know as a kid you know and you're always like oh you thought there was a place you know that uh, you'd never ever get a chance to go like our countries will never be able to let us in there or whatever but now it's become this place that's just like it's one of the few wish list places that are still really on I'll, my list i want to go check it out you know? here's the thing is uh what i think everybody has to get ready for is that it's going to be a fight night event uh right uh, you know basically i think to, to 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 do with the normal 10 p.m eastern start would be like 5 a.m in moscow they are not going to do that. They're not going to do the middle of the night stuff. I, I know they've done middle of the night for the UK, but that's an incredibly established market. And, yeah. and, 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 and so I think a lot of people are kind of thinking, well, if they do this September thing and, you know, Habib happens to win over Tony Ferguson and it's Habib versus Connor, could you do Habib versus Connor in Russia? You know, dating back to our interview with Dana White so many you know months ago where ah, he wants to do it in Russia. Yeah. I think it would be amazing, but I don't think it's going to happen because I think – they want to do that fight at local time. They, you know, they they want to do it at the right time. They want to make a nice splash. 
Um, you know, obviously Habib versus Connor would be an incredible splash to make, but then it would put that in the daytime here in the United States, and that's their biggest pay-per-view market, yeah. and that would cost them millions and millions. I mean, can you imagine if, like, hey, man, we've got this – I mean, we've got the fight that everybody wants to see, and by the way, it's going to be on at, you know, 2 so in you the think afternoon. Th- you think they wouldn't want to do it for fear of alienating the the Russian crowd, the local crowd? No, I think they would love to do it in Russia – but the thing is, that they're not going to do the 5 a.m. start in Russia. They're going to do the, the local time. But doing the local time... You think it could mix in the middle? I could see them doing a the morning, but maybe not that early. I could still see them doing a the morning. I like a still, 9 a.m. like they do in Japan? Like a 9 or something. Because no. I guarantee that the Russians will still come. If it's on a weekend... No way. They're going to be there. No way. They I want, think they would be there. They want to come in and... Make, wow, fuck. Well, I mean, I think I guess the, the argument thing, is you want to make a splash. So is the splash you come in with the biggest names possible... Or you come in and do what you're supposed to do, which is put your put your product on at prime time. Right. The only reason I would see that they would maybe do it if it's a place like mm. say like Brazil where the government has a stake in it, and it could be that very same way in right. Russia. And if that's the case, then of course I think it would be more local time. But if it's a matter of they're just like whatever, do your thing, come in our country, we're gonna get a kickback, we're gonna get whatever. You know, from it, do it whenever you want. But I think if the government was involved and they have some stake and they get paid and they probably are, and they're on the board, on the level of Mm -hmm. getting money, they probably want it more local time so that they can promote it and they could do whatever. But I think as for just, if it was just involved with the Russian fans, if it's a decent enough time and it was like a morning event and it's a weekend, I guarantee, or at least my, my take of what being the first event in their country... The Russian MMA fans, which we know are like diehard fans, they're going to be there. They're going to be there regardless. And especially if you put like uh, uh, Khabib on it, holy cow, you could put it at 5 a.m. And I think they would still be there (sighs) because they would stay up drinking the whole night before. If they're like us, they would stay up straight drinking. And then just by the time the the event ended at at 2 p.m., they'd be literally shit-faced. I guess that's an interesting argument because, I mean, the, the thing is, look, I, I think in, in, in talking to, you know, people in the UFC, like, they definitely view that as a, as a huge market, you know, a long-term yeah. goal. I mean, obviously, right. it's, it's, a, it's a massive uh, market. And, and so I think they want to do the best thing possible, and I think that means they don't want to do an event in, 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 you know, the middle of the night slash early morning. Where I think they want to do a primetime show. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, you know the shows in the morning in Tokyo, the shows in the morning in Australia, New Zealand, like. But oh, those are like. Yeah, exactly. The talents, but if you bring in, if you're bringing a uh, big, big name, I think that, I think that they would be like, okay, you did your part, you brought a star, and at the times you need, we understand that if you're bringing a quality, they're, I mean they're all equal. I mean, don't, I guess don't take this the wrong way, you, but if like, you, no, you if know. you had Habib and Connor. At five o'clock, you can put in the it morning. at five, and it's still going to be fucking packed. Fuck, you're right. It's you're still right. going to be packed. I mean, locally, and it's still going to because they they got to realize that they're not going to. Uh, you're right. They ne- still need the U.S. market that to do it, but I think that the Russians would be like, "Fuck yeah, you're bringing us the real deal." You know, what I mean, anytime that you're gonna maybe make it more casual for the locals, is you got to bring something that's going to be worthwhile to them. So you bring the names that do whatever, but you know, or you. If there aren't maybe, say, the biggest headliners, then you're like, okay, we didn't bring the biggest headliners, but it's more friendlier to your local time. So we'll make the U.S. Right. pay the price. But if you're, you're bringing, right. if you're bringing the big stars, I think they'll be stoked. And I don't know, just being on the weekend, I mean, it's not like it's a 5 a.m. on Friday. You know, if it's 5 a.m. on Sunday morning or something like that, most of the Russians are going to probably party their ass off I, on Saturday. I guess the key is, though, it has to be Habib, right? Like, it would have to like, be a like, big Let's name. say Tony Ferguson. Huge well, well, name. I mean, what if it was Connor versus Tony? That doesn't make sense to do in Russia, right? Uh, well, I still think Connor could probably yeah, do but it. that is Tony make, himself, but I mean, it's like not Con- as much. Connor versus Tony Ferguson in Russia in September, that doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't make sense. I mean, it certainly wouldn't carry as much weight as, like, if it was Connor against Khabib. But if it was Connor, Khabib, you, you're you right, man. It could go at any time. You could do that, right? you could do that any Russia time, at 5 in the morning. And it would be fucking huge. It would be gangbusters. Fuck, you're right. All right, so here's the deal. If Khabib wins, maybe it'll be a pay-per-view. Yeah. <laughs> If if Tony wins, it it's not cer- going to be a pay per view. It would certainly make sense that uh, that it would be because uh. I mean, I mean, you figure at that point because then they probably could offset the cost with whatever broadcast deal they're going to probably pocket for mm-hmm. coming over there in the first place. Of course, you know, because I'm sure in Russia they'd be like, all right, you know, you don't want to come, but hey, you could watch it free on Dasvidanya channel or whatever. <laughs> or not. <laughs> That's not even Russian, is it? I don't even know. Whatever. 
But uh, how would Fedor? Uh, it's amazing <laughs> that you got Fedor Emelianenko to tape a promo just in case Connor versus uh, Habib happens. Like it's so they're they're going out of their way <laughs> to to go ahead and preview things. Uh, and and I I don't I don't know if we're gonna, if we're gonna get in trouble for playing this audio, <laughs> but I think it's amazing that you've collected this Fedor Emelianenko promoting uh, Connor versus Habib on Das Vidanya TV. <laughs> You watch, or it's Das Vidanya for you. <laughs> <laughs> what does Das Vidanya mean? I don't know. Like, <laughs> goodbye or see you soon. Maybe it means I want tacos, but in Russian. Is that even Russian or is that German? Das Vidanya. I don't know. If, if Fedor know. said it, it must yeah. be Russian. <laughs> it must yeah. be Russian. <laughs> if Fedor said it, it I'll take it Russian. as Russian. Uh, all right, here's the other thing. Uh, Chile, uh, I've heard... Uh, that it definitely looks like uh, the, the the goal is to get Santiago Ponzinibbio in the main event. I've actually heard Santiago and maybe, Santiago. Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> uh, but he's he's Argentinian, so I mean, it kind of makes some sense. You know, you get the South American connection. Uh, and I've actually heard that there is a possibility that it could be Ponzinibbio versus Cowboy Cerrone, which wow. would be a sick fight. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's the update from around the world. Uh, a couple more things, real quick. Caliente. Francis Nagano. Do you see this? Uh, Francis and Derek. Chirping a little, all right. Or but Francis is talking about Brock Lesnar too. Eh, well, he's. I think he's kind of said that before, and I think uh, he's hinted. And I feel like other heavyweights have said that. Even fucking Stipe, I thought at one point chirped about that, or maybe didn't go to the Twitter. But I feel like we've heard these guys talk about Brock. Agent Brock, H is just rushing us over here. I'm. I know. I still got this I'm, full one right here. That's okay though. We're gonna make it happen. Sorry. No, wow. don't apologize. I'm. I, I appreciate it. Slow your roll, That's woman. That's all I got. Slow I'm, your roll. I'm, I'm double parked over here, but I'm okay with Dude, that. Dude, I'm double parked. I'm triple you're parked. You're never double. Wow, you're never triple parked. I know. I got some work to do. All right, so <laughs> Francis Ngannou, Brock Lesnar, Derek Lewis. I, all right. I mean, I guess because Brock Lesnar still has six months suspension to serve. All right. And I, think, not, I thought he just renewed his contract with like WWE well, or did something or I whatever. Not that that really means. That. I mean, that's two different complete entities. We've seen guys – I mean, when he fought before, he was still underneath right. WWE contract. But so. so, what do you think? So, I mean, I mean, so here, okay. So let me put it to you like this: uh, Brock would destroy him after watching what happened. Brock would destroy him. Wrestling. All he would do is just grind him down. Uh, All he would just he would just do that bulldog take takedown. I'm gonna tell Francis you said that. Well, I don't mean I would tell. I would. Well, I would just have to say, Francis, did you show up the wrestling? Mm. If Stipe can take you down, Stipe didn't even try. Well, I mean, he did, but Stipe was like strike, strike. Now I'm taking you down because they're getting close. Brock's like, I'm just going to fucking bull rush you. He's right. just going to do the Brock bull rush. So let me put it like this. Uh, okay. Are you excited about it? I mean, are, do, are you cool with Brock coming back? Because I haven't even seen you in a little while. Like, I'm kind of okay with Brock coming I'm back. I'm fine with it. All Whatever. Right, so, I'm fine so, with it. So let me ask you this. If oh, So we know it's going to take six months, right? So if we could say yeah. right now, we could sign a, 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 a bout agreement for Francis Nakano versus Brock Lesnar on October 1st at some unnamed pay-per-view, right? Yeah. We could sign it right now. Or... We could do Nganu Lewis first, and then maybe we get Nganu Lesnar. Maybe we get something else Lesnar. Maybe we get whatever. Would you rather do Nganu Lewis first and see what happens, or would you rather sign the sign the dotted line right now, Nganu Brock? Would I be speaking as a UFC employee or or a fan of the uh, sport? Give me, I mean, give me the angles. Give me the. Two I mean, angles. if if I'm coming from what is best for the UFC. You want Brock and Francis first because that's going to get a hell of a lot of eyeballs, right. you know. But as for what makes sense and what is like a legit real fight, it's Francis and Derek. Yeah, I mean that's the fight. I mean it's the fight for the longest time. I didn't want to happen because there were two guys that, two guys I really respect, but there are also two prospects that are building up. I, I agree. It's the two guys that I didn't ever want to meet I, because I didn't want one guys to lose we his were, shine. We or were in Croatia and they were both on the dais. Yeah, and people are you know the, the European media was already talking about well, what do we match these two guys up? And I remember me and you were like, yeah. no, no, we don't want that. Let them let them have their own paths. Let right. them have. Their, but I do agree they've had their own paths. Right. One of them got to a title shot. Right. One of them had some setbacks along the way. Yep. Now now I think it's time for them to meet. Yeah. It's it's got to the point where it's inevitable now. Both of them have had their chance. You know, one's had a title shot. Uh, like you said, there's been some setbacks for Lewis. You know, he hasn't been able to get that shot. This is the kind of fight for that to happen, and he's able to get the win over over Francis. There's nothing that stands in the way that shouldn't be that, all right, he's done what he needed to do. This is the last fight that Francis had was against the champ. 
Derek, if he's able to come in there and get that win, why shouldn't he get that shot at at at, at Stipe? But as for terms of what's going to bring a lot of crazy eyeballs, but do Nagano versus it would have been Lesnar. better. It would have been better if if Francis didn't have the fight with Stipe and sort of have people see his kryptonite. I think it would almost have been better because he would have been carrying all that hype and all that momentum into like a Brock fight. Mm-hmm. It would have been the biggest thing that you can imagine because people would have been like, oh, my God, F you, Brock. Here's the MMA guy that's going to destroy you. Right. Now people have seen that that MMA guy that can still destroy 99% of the guys except for one wonderful gentleman from Cleveland, one of the greatest places in America. <laughs> Uh, it's not. Cleveland can be a real oh, shit all the time. I love. <laughs> I oh, but I, I mean, it's lost a lot of its thunder of what that fight could have been. Right. Um. But I mean, still, I still like think, on, on a poster, but that's just entertainment. On that's casual, just on casual. Fans. When you look at that, those are two freaks of nature. And the crazy thing is, that Brock is just like Francis is uh, just such a enormous individual. Mm-hmm. You put him up opposite against. Brock, he's not going to be as big. Brock's not going to look like that big. Brock behemoth. is huge. He's huge. I size mean, of his head, size of his hands, size of his just shoulders. Unreal. I'm like, it's. It, I wouldn't be surprised to see Francis look like the smaller individual. You know, unfortunately for with Brock and maybe he's not been doing the training that Francis. Francis is going to be maybe not the bigger looking individual. But he's going to look like the more in shape individual. Yes. But it doesn't matter with these two. Like wh- wh- when it comes to Brock, I mean, like what he was able to do to Mark Hunt. And granted, this was a guy that had extra shit in his system. You know, albeit whatever that was able to help him in that fight, he still did what he did against Mark Hunt, a, a dangerous striker, one of the strongest punchers that we have in the whole UFC. Mm-hmm. Now you have Francis, another guy that. Maybe by the the numbers that the the PIs put out is in fact the strongest puncher in the UFC. He didn't he didn't beat Stipe. He didn't even have a chance. I mean, he made some good contact and he hurt Stipe, but he got to a point where he got winded. We saw the same thing when Brock fought Mark. He got Mark. He was able to get Mark down and then he tired out Mark. Brock has a way of just. Using that weight, using that wrestling to just wear out the person, and unless something shores up, it's going to be hard to think that in a, such a short time that Francis will have done what he needed to do to beat a guy that's been wrestling as long as Brock. Brock is a legit wrestler. Mm-hmm. He's a wrestling champion. I mean, like, and I'm not talking about his wrestling. I'm, but I'm talking about his collegiate. Yeah, the collegiate I mean, like, days. He's yeah, yeah. legit. You're not, you're not talking he's, about his WWE. I'm not belt. talking about his WWE. They, you know, even though I'm sure those guys wrestled decently enough, he's a legit wrestler. I mean, his wrestling pedigree is far and beyond what Stipe's wrestling is. Yeah. And you saw what Stipe was able to do against Francis. So, Did you see Ronda's wrestling, by the way? Uh, does she have wrestling? Oh, Oh, her WWE stuff. I've only seen when she's went in there and like slapped, uh, uh, slapped a couple people. Or she did this thing the other no, day. No, she got slapped. I guess she, she slammed. She, what's his face? She Triple did H. this thing on Monday, and uh, first of all, they did a package video, which was the the package video was awesome, man. She gave this. In fact, I actually tweeted about it because she, she 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 was crying and like I, I, the emotion was real. I mean, you know. We've been following her for a long time. I mean, I started following her as an amateur when she fought for Tough Enough here in Vegas, and I was mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to commentate a couple of her fights. Um, but you know, I mean, you can tell like the the actress Ronda versus the legitimate <laughs> Ronda. Well, that was nice. Did you get an email? I did from Chris Costello. We're still learning. We're still learning. We're trying to figure this out. This <laughs> I live I, streaming. I, I, I forgot. I didn't turn that off. This live streaming is adding something different. But no, uh, I I talked about it because. Uh, the emotion was real, and it was emotion that I wish we could have seen. <laughs> she talked about, you know, how, you know, how devastated she was after the losses to home and Nunes, and, and man, it, it was, it, man, it was honestly like it was the most honest I've seen her. It was amazing. But then uh, they also showed like a wrestling clip of her, and it was, it was, it was not good. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying this to talk shit about Ronda because I think Ronda, she. Like there is no doubt about it. she pioneered the way for women's MMA. Yeah. Like you, you can't rewrite history, man. I know people talk shit about her now, but dude, you don't understand how popular she was and how much she meant. And I, I still remember 
you know, fashion show mall at the open workouts and like girls like shaking to, to oh, meet yeah, her. Crying. And I mean, cry. I mean, listen, you cannot take away what she accomplished, what she meant. Everything that's happening in women's MMA right now, I guarantee you, every woman on the roster will have no problem saying Ronda did that for us. Like, I mean, straight up, they will. Have, I've I've talked yeah. to them all individually. I mean, there were some bo- that that were before her, sure, that did their things, but it never. No question, it never, she wasn't the, the spark, first. The spark never took off like it was. She when was Ronda the one did. that made the spark. Yeah. But I will say this, man. The wrestling, oh man, it, it doesn't look good, right? I'm not, yeah. I'm not a wrestling fan, yeah. But it was awkward, so I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the skills come around because I know she's and happy, ch- I know she's loving it, and I want her to keep doing it. Yeah. But they had like a little spot that they they didn't feature it on TV, but they featured it online. It was pretty, it was pretty awkward to be honest yeah. with you. So hoping that gets better. Well, and that's the that and that's the difference between and and sorry for all you big wrestling fans or whatever. Uh, there is huge amounts of physicality to the wrestling Absolutely. that happens. Absolutely. But it is still remembering your your scripted spots. and choreographed. It's scripted. You, ha- you have to move. There's in a still way. stuff. And I mean, and like Ron is. I mean, and you watch. She's gotten better with some of the films that she's been in. But there's still until it becomes second nature. It's going to be awkward as hell. She's not awkward when it comes to the fighting because that's second nature oh, to dude, her. Like when her it's, open when workouts it's and stuff, stuff. Oh my god, it's amazing. But what? But when you put it in a scripted environment, when you put it in a matter of, all right, I, I have to do this. This is supposed to happen, and then this happens. And folks, like, there's nothing harder in this life. Well, whatever. Take this with a grain of salt from a theater major. There's few jazz things, hands. jazz hands. There's few things harder in life than live theater. And ultimately, that's, that's what, what that's what WWE is. is. It's yeah. live theater. You are interacting with the crowd, and you are interacting with your stage, your scene partner, and you have to follow what you sort of. There might be improvisation within that, but you still know what needs to happen before. So the storyline keeps moving forward, mm-hmm. and until that's second nature, it's going to be awkward, and it's going to seem rough, and it's going to be whatever. And so I didn't see this wrestling, but I can only imagine it's because. She's waiting for the this certain That's right. it, step to happen not, before she moves into another right. step. It's, Whereas if it's a fight, she's got it. Even not having seen it, you nailed it. She's you know, she's waiting so that she can react. Right. You know what You're I mean? You're going to do a kick, and I'm going to go back into the yeah, ring. Yeah, yeah. But then I'm coming for it, and then I'm going to throw an elbow that you're going to duck. Where it's a matter of like, if you just went in there and said, Hey, Ronda, I'm going to come at you. The two of us are going to come at you. Defend yourself. Shit would go real, oh. and then it would be the most natural scene ever. But her scene partners were like, "I don't know what to expect." But all like of a sudden, my my elbows my dislocated. <laughs> you know, but that's the difference. I want to circle back real quick to Mark Hunt. It's funny. Uh, so uh, I I finally <laughs> I finally own. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> that was a good workout. I finally own the UFC video game, uh, the new UFC three. Uh, I've been waiting for this damn. I I have the EA access on my Xbox. Yeah. I'm waiting for them to discount right, it. So because my mo- my mom ain't cheap. my mom gave me some money for my birthday. I turned Aww. forty last week, and uh, that's what you spend it on. Well, my kid my kid has been asking me because I download the demo. That's legit though. I've been da- I download the demo and I played it with my with yeah. my son. He was like, hey, uh, you know, where's the game? And I was like, well, the demo doesn't work anymore. Like the the game will come out eventually. Yeah. Because I was waiting for like a discount or something, and, and finally my mom sent me some money, and I'm like, all right, I'll buy it. Because my kid likes playing it. He loves Junior Dos Santos. You remember back yeah. in Dallas when Junior Dos Santos brought him out. Oh, so that's now, his dude. That's his boy now. So all he wants to do is play Junior Dos Santos. So the other night. That's like, awesome. He was, Next he was, time you see Junior, I have to uh, tell him that. That's so all shit. he wants to do is play as Junior Dos Santos. And he was going through the heavyweight division the other day. like, And so I was putting him up against like wrestlers. Because I put him in the – I mean, he's five. So I put him in like the stand-up mode or whatever. Uh, so we could just do striking. And uh, I was so they have him, a stand-up only? Mm-hmm. So that's different against. than the KO mode. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. KO mode, they just they can't have KO do KO mode. Yeah, exactly. And then they have stand up okay. and they have submission. Wow. So, I, so I put them up against that. So I was putting them in stand up mode. And I was putting them up against like largely wrestlers. You know, like ah, here's Alexi Olenek or whatever. You know, like so that he could kind of piece up. And it was on the easy mode, of course. You know, so he kind of piece up. But even on the easy mode, uh, he got faced up against Mark Hunt, and he was just like piecing up Mark Hunt, piecing him up, and then like Mark Hunt just. Boom! Came in with the right hand and like game over. You know what I mean? He's like, so we lost to him twice in a row. He's like, this guy is tough. You know, I'm like, yeah, awesome. Mark Hunt's tough as they come. So he's legit. It was pretty funny, and then it was cool because you called Mark Hunt after that, and you recorded this piece of audio where he talked about, uh, you know, how great he is. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, all right, listen. Uh, USC 225. We're talking about all the great fights coming up. USC 225. Cool. Uh, it, it was so, cool. But now that you have the 
Is is the Snoop shit still in there? I don't think so. I haven't put. I gotta wow, check so out. We ruined it. I we ruined it for folks. Like EA went in and legit took it out. Just I to literally piss us have off. only played it for like twenty minutes, but I get, I haven't seen you it yet. Go was that knockout mode? I think that was knockout mode. So I gotta check out knockout. You gotta mode. go because if, if they don't have there, it, if they pulled it, uh, now we know why they hate us. Now we know why they're pissed off. Before they were like, "Hey man, you should come by. We'll scan you. We'll put you in your blue <laughs> shirt." Now they're like, "Fuck you, <laughs> asshole!" Like we had to redo the game just because you're stupid <laughs> ass. Uh, all right, USC 225 in Chicago is on June 9th. I will not be there. I'm, I'm missing a couple of pay-per-views, man, because May 12th is my son's birthday. I'm not going to go that. Uh, my goal, by the way, just to, to let you in on how we do things behind the scenes, uh, I want Cole Coffee to be at every single USC pay-per-view. He's the best videographer we have by, by, by a long shot. Uh, so I want to make sure that on pay-per-view weeks we have the best video offerings we have. Uh, so I will not be in Brazil, uh, and I will not be in Chicago but because if I, that is Matt Erickson's backyard. But if I just shoot it all fucked up, I'm just going to record it on the ground, and I'm going to make sure I put it in there, and you can just make fun of me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> exactly. So I will not be at UFC 225 in Chicago, but Robert Whitaker versus Yoel Romero 2 is happening there. Uh, big wow, props to uh, that's a good one. the Australian PR office. This was awesome. So they reached out to me while I was in London. They were like, hey, would you like to talk to Robert Whitaker? I'm like, yeah, man, I'd love to. You had to stop your T's and crumpets. Yeah, but I'm in London. Oh, we checked, in our, we checked in our Airbnb, and they had, like, biscuits. <laughs> they and, did. Oh, it was amazing. They had tea and crumpets. Yeah. Tea and biscuits. So, uh, they asked so biscuit th- isn't a cookie. No, yet. it was a little different. This was thicker than that. Do they call biscuits cookies? I think so. I can't remember. Cause right? They are, right? Biscuits or cookies? Something. Silly, silly English. No, <laughs> I had a chance to talk to Robert Whitaker. Uh, so here, here's so the great thing was so the Australian PR office, Pete Klosko, who's uh, a stud, Pete reached out to man. me. He's like, "Hey, listen, you know we've got this going on. Are you down?" I'm like, "Of course, I want to talk to Robert Whitaker." And I'm like, yeah, "Problem right. is, I'm in London. Uh, how do we make this happen?" He's like, "Well, listen, I, 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 I let me do the time figuration real quick." He's like, "Cool." He's like, "Listen, this will be on Friday night at 11 p.m. Are you cool to do an 11 p.m. interview on Friday night?" I'm like. Absolutely. So what like, time is that on in, please, in their time? I'm not sure. But I did say, please understand. They're like 19 hours, Please I think. understand that at 11 p.m. on a Friday, I may have had a frosty <laughs> beverage or two. I was like, I promise to be relatively, you know, sober. But I was like, I may be a little bit. So, uh, But he was like, cool, just don't don't be a dumbass, you idiot. Uh, and I will set this up for you. So uh, here was uh, my conversation that I had uh, from London with Robert Whitaker ahead of his rematch with Yoel Romero. Why not? Not much. Let's just get a feeling what your emotions are like right now, man. After, you know, kind of all that's been going on and, and the, the up and down year, you know you're getting back to action. What, uh, what does that feel like right now? Um, yeah, I'm stoked. Like you said, I've been out for a while and um, I think it's almost close to a year since my last fight. And I'm drawing ready to go. You know, I'm, uh, this is me, me and Yo are going to do it again. It's a tough fight the first time, but, you know, I think I've got a peg. Right Give me an idea of what was going on, Robert. I mean, some of the reports were kind of confusing and kind of scary. I mean, I think at first people thought, you know, your, your career might be in jeopardy. What, what exactly was going on with you? Um, so I was training hard for the fight, and, and I just, um, I did my hamstring, and then, you know, I worked around it. I'm no, no, uh, no stranger to injury during training. And, um, but then I got like a, a abscess staff, abdominal abscess staff infection, and, um, the antibiotics, they, they, they put me on, ran me ragged, uh, had to get tests to make sure that no bugs were entering my colon and, and, and stomach, and that just blew out of control. Then once we started getting, getting by the rains, I, 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 contra- I contracted um, chicken pox. <laughs> and the chicken pox was by far the worst thing I've ever had. That was the worst. Never had it before. And yeah, it was, it was absolute hell. That's so crazy. I mean, that that seems you, you think of that as like a, a children's disease, right? Were you shocked? Yeah, like I, I thought it was. At first, I, was, well, I saw the doctor and I was like, "Nah, it can't be." But then, then it, like they got they became bleeding and everything. And I was like, "Oh my god, this is horrible." Yeah, it was I wonder, Rob, what, what it was like mentally for you. I mean, here you are, man. You've worked so hard to get where you are. You know, you're on top of the world. You had this amazing fight. I mean, everything's going right for you. And then all of a sudden, like, everything's going wrong. I mean, was this was this a, a difficult period for you mentally at all? Um, a little bit. Um, mainly because um, I had to I had to pull out of the fight. Uh, I've never pulled out of a fight before due to injury. And, um, 
you know, when 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 I was a headline in my own home country, it was, it was very hard for me to to get around that fact that I, you know, I'm gonna have to pull out of this one. Um, yeah, I, I did, did too well with me. I, I'm, I'm not one to pull out, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I have a, I, I truly do believe in the saying, "When it rains, it pours." And uh, you know, like I said, I've had a lot of good fortune, so getting sick now and then, you know, can't be helped. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, Rob, I know you're not, like, you know, a super, uh, you know, outspoken or, or controversial type of guy or whatever, but I do want to ask, the, you know, that the whole title situation and how it unfolded and just the way things were playing out while you were on the sidelines, what what were your thoughts on that, man? Was it was this a frustrating time for you at all, or, uh, you know, did, did, you, did you get upset with the way it was handled or politics or anything like that? How did, how did you make it through all that craziness? Um, I was, you know, I was, I was, I was delighted. <laughs> I was super happy. Because they they gave me the time I needed to get better, and then they they pitched my number one and number two contender against each other, which which is great. If if, if all my contenders could just bash each other for the meantime while I'm, while I'm getting better, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was yeah, plus, like as a fan, you know, that was really interesting seeing that fight. I was seeing how I was really curious to see how y'all would go up against Rockhold and vice versa. Um, Hayden Yole didn't make weight. That was unprofessional, you know. I mean, like, uh, yeah, it, it's unprofessional at best. You make all the excuses in the world, but at the end of the time, end of the day, if you if you rock up and you're not on weight on the scales, you haven't done your job. So um, that, that's my thought on that. And uh, but the, the fight was was you know it left left me jaw slapped to see Yol start rock hold like that. It was just. It's crazy, especially when Yo wasn't fighting like he does normally. You know, he, he, he came out with a completely different game plan. I don't know if that was kind of a rockhold or if it was due to some injury, but yeah, it was very different. It was, it was a different side of Yo, and I'm glad that fight happened. Yeah, you. I mean, I, I think you made it clear. Probably, I mean, you, you just called them the number one and number two guys, so you feel pretty good that yeah, Yo's definitely the right guy. I mean, I, I think there were some people saying maybe you know maybe there's some other names that. Deserve this opportunity instead, but you feel pretty good that no, he's definitely the right challenger for you. Yeah, it was like, well, who, who's left to fight him that he hasn't beaten in the top five? You know, um, it, I think he's definitely solidified his place as, as number one contender. It's hard not to with him just tearing through absolutely everyone and, and until he gets to me. So, yeah, he was like, I can't, I can't discount that, but also. I've never been one to pick and choose fights. I'm, I'm happy to fight whoever's in the number one spot, and that seems to be all right now. Yeah, no question. What's it like getting ready for him a second time? I mean, I know you're a, a professional fighter, man. Uh, you know, fear is, is not an option for you. you got to get in there and with the toughest guys in the world. But, you know, Yoel's a scary-looking dude, man. And, and and when you went in there, you know, it, it's kind of like you beat the boss of the video game or whatever. You know, you meet, you beat the big bad dude with that amazing performance. And then you got to go do it all over again. I wonder. I mean, does it is, is it different this time? Is there a little bit of a less mystery to him, or, or did you did you gain some confidence or some knowledge with you know with the five rounds the first time around? Um. Yeah, you know, it, I, I took confidence in the fact that I'm, I I knew I can face adversity in a fight and then get over the line. But uh, I'm going to know I'm losing that this next fight is fifty fifty still. He, he's an amazing athlete. He's an amazing fighter, and. <laughs> He was hell annoying to fight the first time. So, yeah, I'm looking for I'm looking for a real annoying fight the second. I'm doing everything in my favor to stack the chips uh, on, on, on my side, and I'm going to get in there and, and, and just give them all. Very cool. Talk to me about, and I know you certainly can't look past this fight. I mean, you're sitting there describing how dangerous the guy is, but, you know, when you're thinking about your career right now, do you feel like you lost time? I mean, do you feel like, now you got to try to make up for some of what you lost, or or, or can you let yourself think that way? No, nah, like uh, I, no, nah, I don't think that at all. Like um, it wasn't even a thought until you mentioned it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, I've never been one to to worry about the path that I'm treading. It, it's more more or less I'm just I'm doing I'm doing me. You know, I'm, I'm going every day. I get into the gym and I increase my skill sets and I strive to become the best fighter that I can be. And uh, I, I think that every time I step into the octagon, I'm, I'm showing that I'm showing a better version of myself. I'm showing the skill set that I'm gaining. Uh, I, and then and, and with that mentality, I, I made it all the way to the top. 
And I have the same mentality now, you know, the number one contenders want to line up and I'm going to fight them. I may win, I may lose, but I'm doing, I'm doing the right things. And, uh, and yeah, you know, if, if I'm doing the right things and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, there's, 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 no, there's no timeline for that. You, you said it, Rob. I mean, you should, you battled back from adversity. I mean, you mentioned you, you, you got hurt in that fight, too, uh, previously. But, uh, I mean, do you, do you see yourself just having to dig in and, and, and this being another five-round battle that, uh, you know, it's kind of back and forth and tested again? Or, 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 you know, do you have hopes that maybe you could finish in this time around? Um, yeah, maybe. It could be another war. No, I'm expecting a war. But, uh Every time I step in, in, every time I step in there, I'm looking for the finish. All the way up into the end, bell. I'm, I'm always trying to go for the finish. He's a tough dude. And all the guys that, that I haven't been able to finish, it wasn't because I wasn't trying to tell you that much. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. Well, listen, I appreciate the time, Robin. Everybody's just super excited to have you back. I mean, your, your last performance was amazing. Your winning streak's been uh, incredible. Uh, any, any other last thoughts, messages, you know, anything like that that we can get out there for you? Uh, just if you... <laughs> If you want to see fireworks, make sure you, you, you tune in and watch, watch me and Yell go at it. All right, so the champ, Robert Whitaker. Uh, talking about battling through chicken pox, man. I thought that was crazy. I didn't realize that exactly what had happened. And, uh... I love his attitude towards you, over Romero, man. I feel, I mean, I, I got to be honest. Like, I feel bad for Whitaker. Like, bro, you know, y- you went against this challenge. You beat Yo Romero, like one of the scariest dudes in the entire sport. And your reward for, for doing that is facing Yo Romero, one of the scariest dudes in the entire sport. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey. So I like his attitude, but damn, dude, that's, uh, that's tough. It is. It is. But he's also got the confidence of, I've, I've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. I've been there, done that, you know, and uh, you. I feel like it's a different UL though. Maybe he's had maybe a little adversity. Maybe he's faced that loss. Maybe he, you know he's faced the questions. He's. I don't know. I, I think anytime we see these fighters, you know, face a little something, maybe get their hand slapped, they come back hopefully focused. And I I feel like that's what we're maybe getting. You know, for him to do what he did against Rockhold, it was just like. Wow. Yep. He looked every bit as dangerous as we thought. You know, if, if people thought that we were maybe getting the older Yoel, the the maybe less focused Yoel, I mean, like, I think that was point proven. He's as dangerous as he's ever been. But the thing is, for Rob, is like he's been there, done that. He's felt that, and he has power on his own. And one thing that I decided with Rob after doing what he did to Yoel the first time, to Jacare, to the other guys, like. I'm just at this point, I, I can't bet against Rob. Like, mm. you know, like he's, you know, I I could see where some people come back and like, oh, well, he's had injury. He's had illness. You know, is it the same Whitaker that we're going to get? You know, Yoel looking at where he's at and his physicality, think that maybe he's probably looking the best that he's ever did. You know, I mean, he's such a freak of nature. But, man, I still want to – hang my hat when I finally got to the point where I was like, all right, fine, Robert, I'm not going to bet against you. And I'm not saying just in terms of actually putting money. Right, just, right, just, just in your thought, your pick, I'm just not going to pick course. against him. And, and he hasn't done anything or shown me anything that would sway that. And, and the fact that he's actually won the fight before, there's that – I don't – there's no fear for him in that sense in that there's not this mystical – opponent that's coming in that's just larger than life because in his mind he's like bro i've already saw it, seen yep. it and i've already beat it so i know? feel like you, you you beat the boss in the video game once and, and now maybe you'll, you'll do it again but it's, right? it's but it just sucks that you get stuck with that guy again so all right uh listen we're, we're running long but it's been I, I think it's been fun but uh hopefully nobody's mad at us for keeping them too long i did want to tease something uh i don't know if we're allowed to do this or not but uh oh but fuck it uh, we were on a conference call this morning, right? Oh, it's kind of fun, right? You're teasing that? No, that was. I'm, good. I'm teasing that because it, it sounds like it's a done deal at this point. It, it, it sounds it like it's a done, done deal. deal. At this point. <laughs> it's uh, uh, I don't know how much we can say and how much we can't say, but I will say this is, and, and I should say this is an MMA junkie project. This is not uh, a roadshow project. This is an MMA junkie project, but it, it, it does heavily involve the roadshow as well. Um, 
I, I'll just say, I mean, we've teased on here before, right? Like my first fight series and, yeah, yeah. and, and, and how we'd want to treat it and how we'd want these things to come out. And they've been sitting on the back burner forever because what we want to do to them is not cheap. It's, it's expensive. Yeah. Um, but fortunately our boss was like, Hey, I, I like this concept and I want to try it. And, and I want to give kudos to Simon Samano, um, who was the one that kind of rebrought this, this, uh, subject to the surface or whatever. Now yeah. they're kind of in it. So, um, I won't share the details, but it sounds like we'll see the results probably in the next two weeks or so. Three well, weeks, three it, weeks. It's going to take a little bit in that because if we don't do it until Monday when we give them the first initial mm-hmm. stuff to work with, and then it takes a couple weeks, weeks to, to get turn around. a couple weeks to get to the initial state. Yeah, because there'll be some back and forth. But I'm I'm figuring three weeks to a month before we probably see something. So so maybe the next month or so you're going to see something from stuff that we've recorded with my first fight. Stuff that MMA Junkie Radio has recorded over the years the with, street fight with the Street Fight Stories, which has always been a big part of, of their programming. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this. I, I think it's uh, I think it'll be cool. That's, that, I guess yeah. that's all I can tease. Well, I mean, you could probably tease the fa- I mean, for those of you that we never got away from the fact of liking animation. I think we could probably say that. <laughs> I mean that's so cryptic. It's <laughs> I mean I think there's still ways to go but we've I mean fuck it. That's why you listen to this show cuz right. you get you get the you get the back door. You get the Whoa. the draws down <laughs> behind the scenes Whoa. feel uh we've talked about taking finding ways to uh display these shows in creative manners that are fun for everybody and possibly even more socially shareable, fun viral sort of ways and so we're looking at ways at, at finding a, a, an animated way to display some of these great stories in a way that uh, it's been done. I mean, we're not we're not shattering boundaries yeah, yeah. and doing something that's never been done, but we're gonna try to find ways to ha- play have a little fun with some of these stories and put them out. So uh, we won't tell you who we're looking at. Maybe the first stories to be out there, but uh, for those of you that are like me, that are that are animation junkies that love all that kind of fun wacky stuff i mean we all grew up watching mm-hmm. animations and and i don't want to call them cartoons because cartoons makes it seem childish i yeah, mean yeah. like the stories that are, are are being displayed are definitely of adult nature and i mean they're not my anime that i normally watch which is Whoa. very adult nature you know what I'm, saying? Hey! I'm doing i'm doing the horse face right now <laughs> that uh that he does hey hey but uh no, it should be fun. It should be fun. So, so yeah, it's going to probably be a month. So it'll be. It's a work in progress for us because we need to figure out how it's going to happen. But we're going to tease it. And if you guys like it, feel free to share the shit out of it and, and push it <laughs> out there. Because we need that. It ain't cheap. Because we need it. Because it ain't cheap. But also too, if it's the kind of stuff that you guys like. I mean, you know, uh, we're trying to keep. You know, we want to try to keep pushing out things, and let's all grow this thing. I mean, I know we know that you guys are junkies, die hard, but. Uh, we want to keep pushing to the next level, and, and doing this sort of thing is what you guys like. Let us know, share it, so we can fucking decide that that's what we need to do. That's what's up. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. I'm, I'm proud of that. Again, that's an MMA junkie project. Meanwhile, go to Patreon.com/slash MMA Roadshow if you can support the show. It would mean a lot to us. We're, we're trying to do more things here. Uh, we got we we're, we're trying to blow it up in 2018. Uh, we just want to do more fun stuff. And again, it's not necessarily about us being more successful. It's just more about us. Like bringing you more of the road. Like yeah. we want you guys to f- to fucking sit in where we are. That's that's what we're looking to do. Video, audio, everything. We just want to bring the uh, the the, the, yeah. the mixed martial arts uh, road and, show experience to yeah. you. Yeah, and we appreciate you guys. I know we've oh, only man. said a lot of times, you know, like you guys that you're actually pulling out the wallets are are amazing. So Ryan, Jared, Muna, Jay, Joe, Joe, Mark, and Desru. Thank you so much. I know we haven't. Uh, you know, we say you have to pay a certain amount to give on air recognition or whatever, but brothers, we, we appreciate what you guys have done. And, uh, you know, I, I know we don't uh, get a chance a lot of time to say thank you, but uh, uh, you know you mean a lot to us. So That's what's up. We promise we're going to put it to good use. And uh, for everybody else, we appreciate you too. Thanks for listening. <laughs>